What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast, coming to you live from Westside Collector Car Storage in Playa Vista, California. This episode is brought to you by Innova. You ever wonder what that check engine light's trying to tell you? Some people, they try to cover it up. They unplug it, put tape over it, or just dismiss it as an unsolved mystery. With Innova, you can easily identify both the problem and what it takes to fix it. It's like having a personal mechanic in your pocket. Step one is to scan. You identify the problem. That's easy. Connect the Innova OBD2 diagnostic tool. Use features like hot keys and the patented all-in-one display. You scan your vehicle's onboard computers to detect for any malfunctions. Step two, you verify. By pairing your tool with Innova's all-new Repair Solutions 2 mobile app, you have free access to over 60 million fixed solutions that are verified for accuracy by real ASE certified technicians. Step three, you fix it. It doesn't stop there, folks. Repair Solutions 2 is the complete solution. In the app, you'll find troubleshooting information and even be able to order the right parts for the job. And if you still have questions, Anova's USA-based customer support team is always able to help six days a week from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Anova Tools speak your car's language so you don't have to. You can buy Anova Tools at all major automotive retailers, Amazon, and Anova.com. And if you go to Innova.com, you can use code TST at checkout to get 20% off your entire order and free shipping. That's code TST to get a 20% off discount off your entire order plus free shipping. Innova Electronics, find the problem and fix the problem. 20% off with code TST at Innova, I-N-N-O-V-A dot com. We are also brought to you by Off The Record. Guys, it is important to have an attorney ready for when you get a ticket. Not if, when. You're going to get one. It's going to happen. If you're listening to this show and you don't get a ticket, honestly, probably something is wrong. It's just going to happen. So you want to have Off The Record on your phone, in your pocket, right? Off the Record helps pair you with a qualified attorney in almost any jurisdiction you need in the United States of America. It covers like 90 to 95% of the population of of America. They pair you with a qualified attorney, and guys, you, you can't have this kind of help without Off the Record because they have it set up. Like, you could be in a state that's like four states away from where you are. Even if your brother is a lawyer or your sister or you have a great lawyer at home that you love, that doesn't guarantee that you get a ticket in that lawyer's jurisdiction. This is an economic ecosystem, and it's going to eat you alive if you don't fight back. Always fight your tickets at offtherecord.com slash TST or by using code TST10 and the Off The Record app for iOS and Android. That's offtherecord.com slash TST. TST, you want to always fight your tickets. All righty then, on this episode of the Smoking Tire Podcast, one of my favorite people in studio, Steve Sirio is here. Sirio is an exotic and uh, a vintage collector car broker to the stars, one might say. And he is here with Cam Ingram of Road Scholars, a Porsche-focused uh, restoration, sales, consignment, and collection management service out of North Carolina. They work together on deals. They work separately on deals, but boy, do they have stories and sage advice for anyone looking to collect cars. It's Cam Ingram and Steve Serio on the Smoking Tire Podcast. <laughs> Welcome to the spot, boys. Thank you very much for Thanks having for us. Coming. You kidding me? This um, is fantastic. I went to your spot, yes. uh, Road Scholar. Jet, Zach, did you just crank my volume? Why am I so high? People are complaining that it's low. Oh, really? Okay. Well, I was like blasted out my own headphones. Um, Road Scholars is a very, very cool place. Uh, I don't know if it's changed in the 18 months or so since I've been there, but mm-hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about what you guys do down there. Uh, well, we're a Porsche-focused business, as you know. We do uh, re- straighten your mic straight a little up. bit. Is that that a, yeah, just, no, make it like point to your face a little bit better. Yeah, like yeah, that. There we go. Right. Oh, that's now you sound better. Now a mic face. Yeah, yeah. yeah right, okay. Cam Ingram. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm Cam Ingram. Um, yeah, Road Scholars, we're a business that focuses on Porsche. We sell rare Porsches. We manage 14 specific Porsche collections worldwide. Uh, we're open to the public. We do restoration work. We, we, we've we won five times at Pebble. We've won 78 Concours events. Um, so we've really got our chops doing Porsche Club of America events and then going through all the echelons of Concours, Amelia Island, Villa Esti, Pebble, all those things. And um, 
our facility's grown since you were last there. We have a full-blown machine shop. We have a full uh, fabrication shop. We have a state-of-the-art paint booth facility. So we, and they're all quarantined in different buildings. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. right. The, they don't actually get to talk to each other. Correct. Yeah. Correct. You know, because they're all different artisans. And as we all know, people like fabricators are totally different than painters. And painters are totally different than anybody else. Uh-huh. But it drives me nuts when I walk into restoration facilities and the paint shop is right there in the metal shop. And, the you know all the sparks and all the metal dust is flying into the paint. You know, That's how they build Teslas. Correct. <laughs> that's pretty much, that's the tent. And that's the quality paint job you get. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's really, really, okay. Where, I, where my brain really stopped and hung up is we manage 14 different collections. Yeah. What does that mean? So we really, I hate to say it because we've been making fun of this for a while oh. now, like asset, man- you know, guys would say, well, I do asset management. We were joking about that before the yeah. show. But we really kind of manage uh, individuals' portfolio collections. So we each guy has a different theme to their collection. So it's all Porsche based, but they have different themes. Uh huh. And so that's fun. Like I like Lamar cars Correct. from the seventies. Yeah, yeah. Or like I like any, any genre you choose within that is going to sound so pretentious. Super. You tell it yeah. <laughs> well, what, I think what he, what he, what Cam does is he saves a lot of people from making further mistakes. Right. Oh. Because you have. I went out and collected these all on my own. Yeah. Oh, great. Oh, so you got laid away, and out of seven out of you know your twelve cars are garbage, and now you're going to try to make your problem my problem when you say I want to trade these to you, and so you try to. It, it's preventative. <laughs> you're damage. now tasking me to yeah. trade your garbage right. out and get you quality right. product. You oh, mean this is a rampant problem in our industry? Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. So, so oh, that God. that then begs the question. Can you turn my headphones down, Zach? I'm blowing my own eardrums out here. I hope the audience isn't hearing it like I am. But, but you have a sexy voice. Like, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Really I modeled it after Seth Rogen. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what are what are the biggest mistakes that someone makes if they go I'm gonna I'm gonna start not just buy a sports car start a collection right and then they call you in a panic going hang on I bought a bunch yeah. of garbage yeah what does that garbage usually look like. I, I mean, it's a varied of problems: restamped engines, uh, rebodied front clip cars. Uh, you know, cars that were sold at a high level restoration or as original, and they're neither. Mm. You know, so Ooh. it's just a, it's a, there's so many pit tra- traps and mines to step into, and. I mean, there's been so much more awareness because of social media and programming, national television, but it's also a pitfall because people think this is easy. I can do this on my own. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I think one of the things, especially that's been accelerated by the pandemic, uh, we're now so used to shopping for shit from home. Correct. That... Sites like Bring a Trailer Correct. and now uh, Doug's site Cars and Bids or or anyone that is offering uh, an online car sales platform that is sort of a pseudo vetting, right? Bring a Trailer vetting is the Tesla level two <laughs> autonomous <laughs> of full self-driving, <laughs> right? It's like just enough well, to make you yeah. feel kind of confident in the purchase, but without the substance of an actual pre-purchase inspection. Yeah, well, it's like, uh, having sold things on there and having bought things on there, we can navigate it easier. But people say, what do you think about this? Or what do you think about that? I can see there's 200 pictures. And if you look at 180 of the pictures, they're not showing you anything. Yeah. And uh, even the walk around video, even the, th- you know, let's get down into the weeds about what these things are really like. And a collection got dropped on my lap. Somebody passed away out here recently and it wasn't even worth, there were 20 cars, none of them were worth going to see. Because it was like, once you dug into it, it's like, oh, I know where you bought that car. I know where you bought that car. I know where mm-hmm. you bought this Aston, this mm-hmm. Ferrari, the, the, this 911T. And it was either bring a trailer, meek them. Uh, and I'm not trying to disparage the, any of these places, but it was all stuff that this guy didn't vet. And then he died, and his kids are like, we're going to sell dad's cars for a profit. It's like, no, you're not going to sell dad's cars at all. You should bury them with dad. <laughs> I mean, put them. <laughs> so, you know, put the, you, Maybe you can turn s- one into a coffin. Yeah. I don't know. How <laughs> did your dad make a lot of money? Because he wasted a shit ton oh, of it buying sucks, this garbage. Yeah. This yeah, is a know? replica that, prowler. He's yeah. the only one. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, look, you... you I think that it distorts the market, oh, right? And, and it allows people who have some money to shop for stuff so well, casually yeah. that you almost kind of forget that pre-purchase inspections are a thing, and you also yeah. forget that there's like 
a lot of other cars that aren't <laughs> on this platform <laughs> right. with all of these eyeballs fixated on Correct. them, right. wanting to, quote, win. And I think right. to your point, you know, auctions used to be the place where dealers would send their junk that they couldn't sell, right? Yeah. And so we call it the, the irony. The irony, <laughs> right? And so now there's so there's such a competitive space all these online, you know, bring a trailer, you name it. There's like three different Porsche specific hybrid mm -hmm. au online auctions. And it's really where people take their own junk to unload. And our shop gets calls every week of, hey, I bought this car. It has a lot of problems. It wasn't as, you know, I thought it was. And, you know, we don't have the bandwidth. And no one's talking about it on the mm. industry side. Right. That mom and pop shops are closing up. You know, they haven't done succession planning. So there's not actually enough shops on the industry side yeah. to really cater to the market and the needs of the market of just preventative maintenance and real maintenance, engine building. I mean, you, you call around to an engine shop or a machine shop, there's a 16 week wait period for no, three yeah. Porsche shops. And exactly. everyone in the world knows this. Yeah. And that's what, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. So well, and no one's talking about that. No one's talking about there's not enough kids that want to be a fabricator, painter, a mechanic, and go through a journey person a trade program. Mm -hmm. And we have our own. It's not that glamorous. Glamorous. It's not. You know, it's, it's not. They, they it's be really the, good money. It's great it's job money. Yeah. security is it's what job it is. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Totally. I mean, if you can build an engine and you want to work on Porsche engines, yes. you got a job for life. There'll be five Absolutely. shops in the country fighting for you. Yeah. 100%. Well, yeah. And then you have the other side of it where you'll try to say to somebody, we've got a 24, 36 month wait for you to get in the door. Well, there's this other place down the street that can take me now. There's a reason why they can <laughs> take you now. Yeah. yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. And those are the same guys that to your point about auctions, when auction catalogs came out, people go, well, you know, it's it's validated because it's in this auction. Uh -huh. No, no, the auction company is only selling what they can get their hands on, and right. then they make it pretty. They didn't validate anything. Right. Those they're, they're regurgitating. Yeah, those crash. pretty pictures <laughs> didn't do the, you know. Yeah. And and even you know, today, the Gooding has got a live auction that's ending, and, and David's a good friend, and we were out with Garth last night uh, having dinner. Good dude. Um, and, you know, at noontime today, every four minutes, there's going to be something that's closing. Well, if you peel back the onion oh, of really? all of After those... Oh, really? After this show, let's watch know, some auctions. Let's so, pull it up. You know, you, you peel back the onion of who sent the cars. Yeah. And let's just say there's maybe a dealer in there that likes to buy things and hates to sell them, so he gives them to <laughs> David to sell. And a lot of times, he's got great cars. Uh -huh. and, but if you if you look at some of the stuff, it's like... A dealer that hates selling cars. Now, that's an interesting loves business buying to get them. into. Loves buying loves them. Buying them. <laughs> <laughs> hates, sell, <laughs> hates selling them. Ah, yeah, it's a great dealer. He must make, make a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> he's making the most. So yeah, he can, he's, he's making the most. He can, he can sway the whole market. Like yeah. His buying power literally can sway the whole oh, market. Oh, really? Is, yeah. that, is that oh, what it's yeah. like? Yeah. yeah. yeah it's no. like he, he just can decide. Elephant in the room. He's the really? elephant in the room, yeah. 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 So. Interesting. Dirty industry secrets. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've, I've heard about yeah. stuff like this, and I've experienced it. I went to I went to uh, RM, or I think it was RM, at Pebble in maybe 2014, uh -huh. and it was the first public sale of a first generation Nissan Skyline GTR. I remember the that. The sure. yeah. you remember? Yeah, yeah. And absolutely. it was the first lot to go up on yeah. the first day yes. of all. And I went, you know what? <laughs> This one might sneak by. Uh -huh. yeah. I'm gonna go in. I got a bidder's pass. And I'm uh -huh. like, I could, I could get this one. <laughs> You're yeah. gonna be the smartest guy in I the room the, with yeah. a bunch of and sharks. The, and the room was pretty <laughs> light. It was yep. a light room. Uh -huh. Not a lot of buzz. Bid opens. I got a bid in, and then just. I mean, I got super smoked, <laughs> and I found out later that the guy who bought the car owned five others already, mm -hmm. and he overpaid for this one to boost the public yeah. sale price of the cars that he owned. Yeah. And I was like, oh, well, that is a great scam you've just done right there. Yeah. Serious, the king of that. <laughs> that's yeah. a, that's He's the king of that. <laughs> that's the Hemi Cuda thing from Barrett Jackson years Is that ago. how that happened? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell me the that story. Hemi Cuda convertibles. I mean, were there six of them? <laughs> I think I can. I get somebody in the in the corner that's validating my. And this guy owned at one time three or four of them. <laughs> so it's like, well, who are you going to go to? Yeah. And you know, I'll I'll buy the next one that comes up at auction and pay for over a million bucks for it because now I've just completely. Uh, raise the value of my own cars in my garage yeah, to, to the is... eye of the public. Yeah. Right, right, so, right. Because the public doesn't know that of the no. six, because Steve Mignante's not, oh, there were six made of these yeah. in uh, 1970. Yeah. And yeah. In fact, one person owns all of them. Yeah, well, <laughs> and, and we may have sold him all they, of them. And they yeah. sell it. And they <laughs> we have worked uh, in cahoots with this buyer for the last seven years to corner the market so we could go onto the commercial and say that they were $4 million each. There's a lot of cahooting happening. It's an un... <laughs> 
it's an unregulated business, and this was always the book I threatened to write. Yeah. And it was always the, if you actually told the story of all these people right. and the shenanigans that go on from, well, one dealer uh, who's loosely affiliated to the auction company mm -hmm. uh, brings a car to market, uh, brings it to auction, and then another dealer buys it loosely affiliated to the auction That's company. Crazy. And what you've done is now taken a car from Europe, brought it to the United States, sold it to another guy in the United States, and they're all related. <laughs> and so you... No way. For sure. So yes this is way. just like a shady importation, gray market, money laundering thing? Well, like well, Steve said... It's, it's, it's just <laughs> boosting your own market. It's yeah. boosting your own market, yeah. yeah. It's so, a billion dollar unregulated business industry. We're global. That's crazy. Yeah. It's so crazy is, to think about, right? So is that system like dealer A says I'm going to sell this car and dealer and behind the scenes dealer B is like okay well I'm going to pay way more money than it's worth because we both have Vested other interest. examples of those cars and then as those get more popular that year sure. or the next couple of years yeah. they they then start making more money is that just the game yeah yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There was okay. a very low mile 328 on Bring a Trailer recently. It 7, was 7,000 miles. Yeah. And it went for 225 grand. Right. And I bet you whoever paid that was doing that. Yeah. Or something like, something market, like that. Boosting up a market, boosting up a market that yeah. they've invested a lot of money into. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Propping it up. Yeah. They remember the chairs and flares Dinos? Oh, yeah. Tony? Never, yeah. Tony's the homie. Yeah. I like uh, Tony's the homie. He makes me laugh. He make, He's the Guido is Guido, uh, yeah. and he makes my he makes me laugh. The Guido every time is Persian you've ever met. <laughs> Guido. <laughs> the Guido is Persian. Yes, exactly. That's really, that's really I nice. mean, a Persian is just a Goomba with a better tan, really. <laughs> sure. With a real tan. <laughs> the Goomba's got to go to the bed. This is so the Persian's good. got it for it's real. <laughs> no, yeah, he, he bought all the chairs and flares yeah. Dinos. Mm -hmm. and uh, and made the market for those basically. But you remember yeah. when the height of the market what five six years ago when those were seven they were selling for seven hundred for yeah. really great cars and then like everything you know correct you got because you got to sustain it you right? got to sustain yeah. it you got to keep that yeah. hype going you got to keep the hype going full well, self driving it's out yeah. on beta you got to keep the hype going. <laughs> if Dino built a rocket. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's and that's going back to the original put a ball around this. Hey, you know, you got to help me with my cars. When did you buy these mm -hmm. exactly, and how much did you pay for them? And that goes back to the, I don't care what you paid for it then. Right. Mm. If you have Enron stock still right. and you bought it 30 years ago, guess yeah, what? Yeah. You missed it. Yeah. Um, and, so, and like all industry, everyone has their skill sets and capabilities and talents. And you know, the secret of our so sauce is being transparent with clients. And so that they understand that you're working for them in their corner, mm -hmm. that you're trying to help them build a quality collection, and that you're not double dipping, you're not taking all these unscrupulous things that happens rapidly in the industry, and all of a sudden you think you're a collector, and you have your guy that is your your wingman that's supposed to be doing it, and meanwhile he's double dipping and, and buying well, bad cars. And, the, I mean, that's just an illustration of the, some the, of the stuff. The, the, the proof and the pudding there is when you sell somebody something and you tell them you can sell it again for them uh -huh. yes. is... You say, oh, well, look, when you're ready to sell this, come back we to me. I'm to happy to sell yeah. it for you. Well, that's actually a good that's a good you way know. to look at it, isn't it? Because yeah, you yeah. have to be around. And, yeah. and uh, or even we, well, we'll we, buy were, it back. we were chatting about, I mean, if you really want to have a laugh at, at, at sort of the uh, gypsy-like quality of the business, pick up a uh, <laughs> car magazine from 30 years ago, 20 years ago, and 10 years ago, and look at all the dealers that were heavily advertising in print. Yeah. And they're, they'll be lucky that if... 5% of those people are still there. Mm -hmm. And this goes back to the height of the market from 11 to 14. You know, guys were working. We've been joking about bedroom brokers. I call them Instagram brokers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah all yeah, these guys yeah. that... You There's know, one in particular that has a real story. There's a, we'll get to that <laughs> in a moment. About, I don't so, want to throw anyone under the bus. Sure the you show, don't, but. I'm driving the bus. Go ahead. I got nothing better to do with my time now. <laughs> I got the I got the M1 tank outside. Let's throw them under it. So now, and, and you talk about these guys that were high flying, and they always had one backer. Yeah. And yeah. They, these guys, these are guys that should be. They should have three <laughs> homes, twenty cars of their own. They should have their own shop, and they're all gone. They're vaporized. They're, they're living gone. on somebody's couch now because. It was easy to do for 36, 48 months. And then when it came to, Brass we text. need to resell these cars. We huh. need the market's dipping, it's changing. And all these guys have just disappeared into the weeds. Yeah. It's, you don't see them anymore all in huddled groups at the back of auction rooms. Yeah. You, know, you, don't, you just don't see them anymore. So are they like the, like, just like remoras on the wave <laughs> yes, of collectability? Yeah. Is that pretty that's much a it? Mr. Yeah. Mr. Fancy Word, yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, 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 it's good. Yeah, that's yeah. good it's, it's like because they're swimming, you know? Yeah. They're yeah. swimming around. And Spike used to tell me about the guys who would hover at the auctions 
who were the fucking loan sharks. Yeah. Oh yeah. Would be all. Oh, you want to? Oh, you want to buy that launcher right there? Oh yeah. yeah. Four points. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they'll just fucking front Ram- you. Well, the auction, I mean, the auction companies will underwrite you as well. Some of them. Well, I learned yeah. that later. Yeah. That was a crazy one. Yeah. I, when I found that out, it's like when I art. found out how the auction company works both sides of it. That mm. was like a. <laughs> yeah, that is a mind boggling. <laughs> and, and we need auction companies. To a degree, but a great many of the great cars never get there anyway. So right, I mean, right. it, it's you know, well. That's why they make the distinction, right? Highest price paid at auction versus private sale price. You well, know, Sotheby's just sold the three bat cars for almost fifteen million dollars. <sighs> Those were underwritten. Yeah, that was a guaranteed sale. They was were it? already sold. Mm-hmm. So they were already there was a price already guaranteed. With somebody saying, if this thing falls on its ass. I'll take it for X. I don't okay. know what X was, but uh-huh. if it was twelve or thirteen million dollars or ten million dollars. So if the auction company then makes much more money, well, guess who gets some of the the vig of that? Is the guy who's put up and guaranteed. Right. If the thing fails, it's going it's going to go in, into his that's right. pocket. But he gets a couple of points he if it goes it. over. Right. Yeah. Well, that's it's so it's smart. What do you think about those? Do you think that's do you think fourteen eight is is a good is a is that a well bought or well sold or neither? Uh, somebody asked oh, me so. two weeks ago. They said, "What are they worth?" And I I said, "It's fifteen million dollars." If you break them down car per car, it's five million dollars per car. They're yeah. four cylinder piss pot little banger, buzz, bangers. buzz bangers. You're never gonna you're never gonna drive them anywhere. They're museum pieces. Yeah. They're not. They're gonna, gonna hang sit, them on a wall. Yeah. yeah. They're gonna so, sit in somebody's Ferrari yeah. collection, Alpha collection, yeah. you know, hybrid. Sit in the corner. But for that kind of money, I, you, I'm personally attached. When I was a kid, yeah, and I. I had a, I have a book. It's still here, and I had I used to look look through these coffee table books of car design. Yeah, I mean, look at that design. Yeah. That, those it's shapes phenomenal. to me were otherworldly, and yeah. so to me that those are the really the pinnacle of yep. '50s concept cars. That and like yep. the Motorama shit, yeah. Yeah. you know. Um, but but f- to me that seems well bought. Yeah. Bruce Meyer, who I was at, I was hanging out with him, and he's he said he was thinking more like three a piece. But I don't know. No, yeah. I think I think I, I think, think well, five is the number. Yeah, you um, nailed it. I mean, they're the, the, erotica. They look at them they're erotica, but at the same time, you, you think about demographic changes, and that's what the industry's been talking about for almost five years now. Is the demographics mm-hmm. going to support the classic mm-hmm. market? Now that kind of money, you can I think go out, for those cars, yes. yes but, but 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 you could buy an F one, you know, original McLaren right. F one, and you know, you're not you're, far off of getting into that true. pool for that kind of money. True. And there still might point. be some much upside in it, and you can drive it. And That's you can a good drive point. it. That's yeah. a good point. So the, I think the new era of collectors are looking at that and weighing the. But that's not somebody's first dive into no, a collector no, 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 car. No, no, I hope that's not. Whoever yeah. bought that has thirty cars to Correct. choose from. Hundred percent. Right. You know, not. But I, if I had the money and I learned it, that 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 was available, I am a hundred percent in on something like yeah. that. Yeah, they look That's really beautiful. good on these racks in here. Wouldn't they? Yeah. Imagine three high, yeah. just them alpha bat cars. Oh, oh my God. God. The bat. <laughs> so hey, maybe good. the guy who bought it is in LA and needs storage space. Yeah, you never know. Fuck, I wish. That'd, That'd be, be awesome. Bring I'd here. just love to store something Come like to that. work every day and just stare. We have know? some very beautiful cars here and we have some very unique cars here, but I would really like to really have a piece of history, yeah. like a concept car that has been, you know, canonized like that would yep. really be extraordinary. Yeah. Yeah. The most, uh, one guy called about uh, storing Danica Patrick's first ever NASCAR hmm. the, for her first GoDaddy car. And I, was, and I, I said we would, yeah. and uh, they never came back. But <laughs> that's <laughs> but, uh, exciting. But uh, the, you know, that's the closest we've gotten to that kind of history. <laughs> I, I was about to go to so many inappropriate things. Oh my I, I was looking at you, going, "Oh God!" He's <laughs> like, "What's he going to say about Danica yeah. Patrick?" <laughs> yeah, I don't care. But um, uh, anyway, like so it? okay, <laughs> let's. So when you're managing people's collections, yeah. right? And they, we, to go back to, they've got a theme. Yeah. Um, do you? Are you then always just eyes peeled and you go, "Hey, Dave, I found one that'll fit your theme. You should yeah. you should buy it." Or does it, does client come to you and say, "I'd like to push this collection this way"? Or and do you also handle like maintenance, exercise, like all of that? Is that is it an all in one kind of deal? It is an all in one type of deal. We have a mechanic that travels to our guys. That's, that, that, that's an option. So they travel. They usually stay in extend stay hotel or at the at the actual house. Some of our clients are really fun and cool. And uh, but it's an amalgamation of both. So we do both. Sometimes we push clients, and we see a, an interesting trend in the collection. We're like, wow, we should really push this kind of storyline or narrative. Or they come to us and we say, yeah, that's that's cool. And then it's more when a collection has an ethos and mm. it's well thought out. It's more compelling. 
And, and it's more interesting to take someone in there and look at it. I mean, that's why Steve and Peter and I all work together because it's it's a team effort and there's only a few people in the industry I trust. Mm. And when we find things that are like way off the grid, that's why we're here this week. Yeah. Uh, it's our, all of our trips to Europe is to go vet things that are really esoteric or super rare, significant Porsches, in my case. I mean, it, it's the bummer of, well, there's countless bummers about the pandemic, uh, <laughs> us getting our wings clipped and not being able to go back and forth to Europe. I think when I mean, we might have touched upon this when I was here in March. I mean, I was there six times in the last couple months of the year last yeah. year doing this stuff, and we were on a pretty good roll yeah, we were. about finding these cars that are just buried, and they never come to market in, in, to the, the public, and you find out about them. And, and to Cam's point, there aren't 10 people in the world I can do business with. There, there, there might be seven or eight that are just, they're knowledgeable, they're trustworthy. If you gave them $10 million in a briefcase, it would and get said, to Hold where it. it had to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, these, and these are the guys that they're gonna stand behind stuff and they're gonna know where all the dead bodies are. Yeah. And, and that's important. And you, when somebody calls and says, I wanna buy X, well, it's all about being the first one on the plane to get to yeah. someplace in Europe yeah, to get yeah. off and you hand know. the guy money or whatever. And it's really easy on date relationships for sure. <laughs> what is, do, you, do you think there's like, you know, are we are we reaching? I don't think we're going to get to the end, obviously, but are we reaching to the end of the the barn finds? Are we? No. Are, is it no. getting much harder to find these cars than it once was? Mm. Or is it, or is the internet and all that other shit making it easier? I think the internet's making it uh. easier. I think it's all about you know, like last year we found this 550A. That's to my knowledge of the limited production produced. This is the only one with an original body, and it ran Le Mans three times and it was put yeah. away. And it was in a third owner's home that's had it for twenty five years. And we're like, how did and this was store it, was it driven or sitting or what? No, it sat. For it was sitting on a lift, <laughs> a, a much smaller lift, yeah. pressed almost up against the ceiling of the guy's garage. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean, and we found out about it through um, a friend. Yeah, just uh, a, a casual mention at a at a dinner. Actually, he way, said he came, yeah. he came <laughs> up to us. He goes, "Oh, you guys deal on this German stuff, don't you?" <laughs> he literally said, "He goes, can you do anything with this?" Yeah. And he handed it to me at this big lunch we went to yeah. last year in London, and it was like. Well, I don't know. I might be able to. Let's get the history about it. Yeah. And then it was just this wonderful sort of domino effect of coincidence and luck that we were going to Germany anyway, and this was around the corner from where we were going. Yeah. So it was like, well, shit, yeah, we're going to go look at it. And then while we're there, we discover, oh, it didn't run Le Mans once. It ran it twice. It's been off the radar forever. Um, and there's a handful of people we can offer this to, and by the time we get back on a plane it was committed it was sold, yeah, yeah it was what sold. is something like that worth a unrestored barn find Le Mans 550A 550A yeah without being indelicate uh, about the guy how much money he has spent it's between it's it's 50% more than an average one so uh -huh. you're looking in the yeah. 6 7 range yeah so it's pricey yeah. And does that car then get a restoration, or did that car remain in that unrestored state? It's actually in yeah, our he's shop. Going and through it now. All we're doing is uh, we're doing mechanical <clears throat> preservation, so we're actually nice. yeah. So it's all the patina is going to stay. We're That's just, good. Yeah, rebuilding all the systems, drive systems, and no rust. I hope no. No, nice. not a damn. And that guy's dri yeah. He drives his cars. Like good. he he's one of the group that we just did the Rockies trip with four nine oh sixes. Oh yeah, tell me about that. It was baller. It yeah. was so, <laughs> so baller. Four nine oh six so. Porsches. Yes, yeah. from. Vale to Aspen and back to Vale. That's pretty G. Up it was way G. Pass. So who was this? Who was the other? Who were the four? You uh, guys? Us. My father drove Ed Anderson, who's one yeah. of our great clients. Bob Denson, another great client, and Zwart brought and Zwart his car. Zwart brought his car. Zwart, right. Yeah. So yeah. and and it, this goes back to um, this was killer. Yeah. Look that's at that it. image. Wow. Yeah. So, we just finished Independence that's Pass. One my, that's one of my favorite bits of highway. As oh, far as interstate, yeah. it yeah. does not get much better anywhere in America. Is that yeah. 70? Yep. Yeah. 70 between Denver and so, Vail. So surreal. The best. Oh, man. And we're cooking there. And, you know, and a week later after we got back, this whole group of Porsches got arrested. Like there were 14 cars out doing like speedy. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. Wasn't that some dealer demo or some <laughs> shit? I don't know. It was, it was all crazy. modern cars. It was all yeah. modern cars. Well, it was a yeah. CHP, yeah. or not CHP, it was yeah. Colorado yeah. Highway Patrol right. post up yeah. thing. Yeah. Hey, if you get yeah. a speed, yeah. you're going to get caught. And I'm, well, and I'm laughing. And look it, at us here. It, Obviously, we're uh, not abiding by speed limits. <laughs> and, I'm not, and, I, and I'm not making a legal judgment, yeah. but I'll make a moral one. <laughs> the photo of where they were stopped. Yeah. 
yes. that road is a 40 mile an hour zone. That is a fucking speed trap. <laughs> right. That's Waiting entrapment. Yeah. That is not an appropriate <laughs> speed limit for that yeah. type of road. It's well, just not. The whole point of that event, <clears throat> I mean, and, and Cam knows, one of the clients uh, is based in Vail, and he just, he, what was his quote? Because we just did a little tour last week around it, it was, New, New England was 356s. Yeah, it was his way, what, what the fuck was I waiting for? Right. And he's got this great collection of cars, and he suddenly realized, if I'm not driving them, I'm an, I'm an idiot. So his 906 in that pack was a Yoke and Rent works car. So Whoa. it was a serious... Who's that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amateur. So, yeah. so, and it was the first time he drove the car. Ever. Ever. So he drove Ever. it on yeah. that, because we got it for him last year, and it was being worked on, and yeah. you know, like like anything, uh, you know, it, it, gas tanks needed to be, yeah. to, you, you we went spent, through we the car. We spent three we months said, on it, getting it back for road worthy. So you had three cars that had never been driven by the three owners mm -hmm. any great distance did that and then trip. Zwart. And then Zwart, <laughs> who's driven his and for cars and coffee daily and lunch. Yeah. Going, yeah. So, um, I, th I think yeah. Steve and I, I had saw a him driving that car recently to a cars and coffee. Yeah. Hey, Jeff, how is it? <laughs> hot, hot. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's, such a, he's such an OG, too. I mean, he, oh, he rules. Yeah. He rules. He's you want to put OG. Zwart and Bruce in a room oh and God. just have them one up each other one for up, several hours. For sure. Yeah. Of experiences and experience. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but we're sitting but on the side of the road. We're sitting on this mountain, and I look at Steve and I go, you realize we have three customers that have never driven a 906, period. <laughs> and we're putting them in these cars. We're going to do 300 miles on these roads, and everyone's flying. And we're in these thoroughbred 1960s pure race cars. And I was like, maybe this is not a good idea. It <laughs> 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 was a little late the, to pull uh, the plug on the event. Yeah, yeah. We're already up here. Yeah, uh, was well there a, a homologation streetcar version of the 906 as well or no? Was That's it. Only it. a race car. Yeah. No, you could you could drive it on the street. Yeah, it's a street legal car. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Th we're talking about the time period where a, quote, prototype racer mm. is still totally a street legal There's car. There's a lot of right? misinformation. In Germany, the 906 was not legal on the street, but for mm. the rest of the world, 906 was was the last street legal race car. Oh, interesting. So 904, 906, and then the 910 is, is technically you got to squint to get a 910 squint. legally on the road. But you can but do you it. Can, interesting. Yeah, it has turn signals for you. Can so is it, it uh, you know, it's it's it, a 906, not to not to demean how awesome 906 is, but it's a pretty regular Porsche powertrain, right? Isn't it a, a six-cylinder 911 engine, well, basically? It's a, it's, sort of. It's kind of a, a really tricky engine because, you know, it's a magnesium case. It has titanium connecting rods. So oh. it's a very high, strong two-liter uh -huh. engine. So it's a sweet little piece. I mean, it revs. It zips like a motorcycle. But, like, can it's, it's air-cooled, presumably, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. So can you if you get stuck in a traffic jam or if you're just idling it for, like, a while, is it okay or I mean, is it a huge it was a, pain in the ass? No, it's a perfect. It was a yeah. testament to the cars because, again, we drove no. 300 miles in normal traffic conditions. You know, we were on some independent spots on some other amazing roads, but we were at stoplights. We were stop in traffic. Yeah. We were top. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what's good about the air-cooled engines. If yeah. you were driving... A lot of uh, no. race prototype race cars. From, if you're driving a Lola, yeah. you, oh, know, yeah. you might have an issue. <laughs> yeah. no, this, this was meant yeah. you can yeah. you can drive that's, this. See, that's you, cool. You I can, like that a lot. Yeah. What yeah. do they like to drive? I think we have to have a, maybe have you out on our next event. Yeah. I tried to sit in Jeff's. I couldn't get in that car. Yeah, I couldn't fit. <laughs> Is uh, there a way I can get in? There's that. I got in. How yeah. did you? Yeah, yeah. Two, with, pound, with, two pounds of bologna, one pound bag. Right <laughs> maybe. I mean, maybe I didn't. <laughs> Do you take the steering wheel off to get in and then put it back on? I was on? a passenger. Oh, it was two of us. Oh, it was easy. Yeah. Yeah. It, was, it was, you know, my knees were a joke. And, yeah. and, and he, he, of course, had to film me falling out and then I'm climbing. So yeah, they love to do that. Yeah. But um, I ripped my pants off and my ass was showing all day. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. I drove that nine six, that Koenig 962 thing. Yeah. And everybody wanted video of me getting out of it. It was just, it was What was that like? Awful. Was it? Not I mean, it was, well, when you're moving, mm -hmm. third, fourth, fifth, you know, when you're when you're moving, right. fabulous, right. fabulous. When you're, you know, trying to get out of first gear. When you have and, to live with it. Oh, I mean, it, it, it was, it's, it was so very much Ugh. somebody got a license plate <laughs> onto a fucking Group C car. I mean, it was, you are in, you're on the 405 and you're going, I can't believe I'm doing this. Yeah. I am driving a fucking Lamar car. This isn't a. Yeah. This is not homologation. This yeah. is someone got a plate on something like a Dower. This, this, this doesn't yeah. make and a the, whole and lot the, of sense. And the reg on it. I mean, dude, this thing. It's so this, baller, though. Bro, I mean, like that, the license plate on this wasn't just a Montana tag. Oh my god. It was a Montana trailer tag. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> this is this was the single shadiest driving. Oh my god, that's so good. I've ever had in my that's. Life. 
to get the graphics on the side that said, do you even lift, bro? Yeah. 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 <laughs> bro, bro, do you even register cars? Do you even register? <laughs> <laughs> that was, I had to drive, uh, I drove Zuckerman's uh, Sport Quattro recently. You know, that, that beautiful yeah. Sport Quattro. How was that? Uh, anticlimactic actually, or did it yeah win? no anticlimactic yeah. Uh, very mm. refined very normal you just start it yeah. up it's like an it's Audi it's just kind of but, a dated thing but now, when you it? put it in third gear yeah. and when it you goes, zing it past five yeah. you go oh, okay now yeah. I know and it's a short wheelbase yeah. and so on the highway if you just do a little wiggle just, yeah, it's you, go, <laughs> you feel like you're gonna <laughs> fucking <laughs> Scandinavian <laughs> flick it into the exit <laughs> ramp it's hilarious it's like a groupie rally yeah you go oh this is like not meant for street driving but there was no tags on it and I went I wanted to pick it up for the for the open grand opening we're having mm-hmm. here and Zuckerman just drive it it's okay I'll just mm-hmm. go get it all right Zuckerman's awesome I get there that. and I go uh, hey uh, Paul is, is there a plate for this he goes ah I'll represent you <laughs> <laughs> that's a perfect imitation by the way <laughs> I'll represent you <laughs> yeah this has been some experiences yeah. I fully yeah. when my Ferrari arrives uh-huh. I fully plan to take it for a drive before I, it's registered I'm just <laughs> allegedly. Well, you, but see here, you still you. They're, it's they're, hilarious, they're, isn't it? It's just you. Cars without plates, brand new People cars, just and just, choose just, just to not do put it. them on. Right, but Bruce <laughs> Myers, the OG that. of that, like he'll go he out in his night. <laughs> he, <does. laughs> he he. Let me tell you a little quickie about Bruce because I the other night, you know, the Peterson is still closed. Unfortunately, the yeah. city won't let them open yet. I don't know. Oh, that's a drag. Let them open. Yeah, it super sucks. They've gone really yeah. out of their way to like make it make it a one way street. You know, the whole the whole fucking yeah. thing. So, but Bruce led a very small group comprised of a few of my customers. Uh, on a private tour, it it was yeah. an, it was so nice of him, and we did the tour of the Peterson, and then he invited all of us over to his garage in in Beverly Hills. Was this this week? Yeah, yeah. He t- I talked to him Tuesday. It was like two days ago. Yeah, Tuesday yeah. night. He was having a film crew, a YouTube guy. There were some YouTubers there as yeah. well. Do we know who YouTubers. those? Collins and Devin Key are their names, and they have an enormous following, and they're very sweet kids, and I'm jealous of how good looking they are. Oh, they look like young Val Kilmer. Those kind what, of guys. Huh? What do they do? Uh, like uh, YouTube, like YouTube bro. pranks, not like not not pranks like playing pranks on people. Like uh, we're filling a swimming pool full of Jello, that kind of big big stunty type stuff that's very expensive to make. He was wearing uh, this, kid was, this kid's twenty three. Uh-huh. He was wearing a solid gold AP Royal Oak Perpetual calendar. Oh, wow. I was like, mm-hmm. I was gonna wear my <laughs> Ren and flex. Stimpy watch today that yeah. I brought with me. Yeah, and it, 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 uh, uh, it's, it's an old joke with a cousin, uh, and he he gave it to me for my sixtieth birthday. And it was so legit old in the package. When I put it on to bring it here, it, the band it fell apart. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, "Yeah, we're we're the anti influencers that we are." Dude, I'm about the red Stimpy watch. Yeah, that's probably so, awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, and it was like, you know, we we're not. In, if anybody can be influenced by us, you need a real life. <laughs> I mean, you got a, you got some serious problems. You need a carriage, dude. So, so, no, back so to we're Bruce. going from the yeah. Peterson to Bruce's garage in Beverly Hills. It's like three miles. Yeah, and I'm on my Vespa. And so, but I, I had forgotten my phone and I didn't know where Bruce's garage was. And he goes, oh, no problem. Follow me. And I go, ugh, I'm on a motorcycle. and I have to follow a car. Mm-hmm. This is lame. Uh-huh. And then I realized that Bruce basically owns the police and yeah, he yeah. drives like it. So his Tesla has no plates on it. <laughs> it yeah. says Peterson Museum <laughs> Tesla. Bro. He was mobbing down Beverly Hills, <laughs> ripping, and I, I was keeping up with him on my scooter by like lane splitting, and I really drive very aggressively. <laughs> and we got there, and he's like, "You need to be careful on that thing. That's very dangerous." I'm like, "Bruce, <laughs> you just went straight from three different turn lanes." <laughs> And he's like, yeah, you know, I'm the executive chairman of the Beverly Hills Police <laughs> Department. And I'm like, yeah, yes, you are. <laughs> we came here about, what is it, a month and a half, two months ago, right after Pikes Peak. We came to visit and uh, just to uh, see some friends. And Bruce picked us up in the Tesla, and I didn't know. And I was like, Bruce, no, this is sacrilege. No. Yeah, no, he's about that. And, then, about and then we the got Tesla. into the thing, and he ripped us around for two days. Yeah. He was like, our, you know, like, this is surreal, Bruce Myers. Do you know, so we're taking us to all these collections. And Here's what I bet you he loves about that car. He rips. It's the, it's the opposite of fragile. Yes. You just slam the throttle at every single red Correct. light. You can't do that in a TR. Right. <laughs> right. you got to be a little yeah, careful. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, no, that doesn't happen. He, he used a lot of throttle. So <laughs> what was the throwdown with you and Lieberman about the 
Tesla. I haven't listened to it yet, but there was I've seen some bits We've and pieces. We played it up for clicks. Yeah. <laughs> Smart. We are we yell at each other every yeah. single time we do a show. This is yeah. not new. Okay. Um, it's clickbait, bro. He is drinking the Kool Aid, and I am not. <laughs> I'm not. I well, that's all, that's really just, all there is to it. He's like, drinking the Kool Aid, and I'm not. I can't be bothered to plug something in because if I do oh, too not much anti EV, EVs I, are cool. It's yeah, not about but that that's I don't get. I just don't get the whole Tesla thing still. Well, I, a lot of people don't like cars. Start, yeah. start with that. Correct. The Tesla is is not a car. It's an iPhone that you right. can drive. It's, it's an iPad. Right, basically. Yeah. And so because when you get into that car, it sort of mirrors your phone, mm-hmm. right? And it does like fun, whimsical, sort of pseudo future things. Mm. In that way, it is a very shiny object. Right. A very shiny object. Yeah. If you buy a Tesla and you've got a bunch of friends that have never been in a Tesla, you will wow the fuck out of them yeah. for months. You will. Sure. And 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 that's what they're counting on because the whimsy of it covers up the fact that the bold claims are not really founded. Well, y- um, you're the guy in 1966 who bought a pinball machine and took it to your house. It was like, <laughs> yeah. look, I've got one of these. We don't yeah. have to go to the arcade anymore. Right. I've got one. It, it's it's so, you know, it's, it's a, <laughs> sure, I get it. And there's a lot of, and being first to market in uh, the cool, fast, good-looking EV space is good for a lot. Sure. It's good for a lot, especially in Los Angeles. It also allowed people that can't advertise that they're into cars or weren't into them to be into cars, because yeah. it's like, it's a green car. Yeah. You're not like, oh, I'm out here buying a supercar, buying a muscle car or something, because uh, my it age is, group isn't into that. It's it, like, it, 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 it adds that to it. It looks like an ugly grouper. The front of those things are just, I mean, they're so nasty looking in terms of car design. Well, There's no design The, the there. lack of the mouth, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's, you have to decide if, to you, a car needs to be slightly anamorphic. Does yeah. it need to have Correct. a face? Yeah. Does it have a personality? And if it, it has a face, face does it have right. to have a mouth? You know what I mean? Yeah. Or whatever. And so I was a little put off by the removal of the grill, even though the grill was yeah. fake. And I'm still not totally on board with it yet, but I'm, I'm definitely less Maybe offended Maybe BMW right needs to re-examine their Well, that's the opposite <laughs> way, isn't it? <laughs> Holy shit. I was like, oh my God, this is... We, you want to talk a about a brand that found a retro design cue <laughs> and totally <laughs> fucked it up. it up. Really Holy bad. shit. You see one in person oh, yet? Oh, God. It's like, <laughs> what a heinous looking vehicle. And you, you, it, when you see a person, you think it can't, look, it, it can't be uglier than the picture, but it is. It's even it's worse. It's actually worse, worse in person, yeah. Because the proportions are. The brighter are like, the color, the oh. worse it gets. And, and I'm like a Beamer boy, and I'm like, what uh, in the world? No. no. Who did this? Who the did this? Shark this is knows, not the shark nose. Someone should have realized the that the 70s. shark knows. Right. It it was it worked in that style, right. but that it's just the, that's the wrong thing. It just to bring looks down. like a whole front end canuder valve, <laughs> and it also it also looks like a miniature version of the eight series, right? Which oh yes, that's the right. Eight series looks way too much like a Mustang, correct? So now this looks also kind of like a Mustang. If you look at a pillar back. It is extremely Mustang, Oof. and if you look at A pillar forward, it's, like it's an, horribly wrong. It's like an OB BMW doll. is not going to be happy with remember you. Those OB, <laughs> remember those OB <laughs> doll squishy things where you'd squish look at that. it and the eyes that and ears is, would that, pop that out? That is Mustang yeah. profile. From the, from oh the A pillar back, it's really very Mustang. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's not right. Yeah, and and oh yeah. by the way, I just drove the GT five hundred with the carbon pack. This fucking M4 wishes it was that. Yeah. That is the jam right there. Was it the jam? If you haven't fucked with a, G- a new GT500 with the carbon yeah. pack, that's the jam. Were right you wearing there. a tank top? <laughs> I was. I had a Skinner 8, tr- Skinner 8 track. <laughs> Hell yeah. And some Natty Light and a cooler. I was, and I was ready to go. It was that sounds like a good time, very actually. Good. Dude, it's got, a, it's got a Tremec dual clutch yeah. that holds more torque than right. a GT2 RS. Yeah, that's pretty it's worthy of, Worthy of our respect. And yeah. if it breaks, it's seven thousand dollars to replace Dude, the whole drive line so problem. fast yeah. man it it's was so fast and so planted and the sh- it ripped off shifts like pdk really? yeah it was very good don't count it out what's huh. very what's good. the msrp out. for that 60 something 70 without the carbon shit yeah nine uh, eight plus 18k for the carbon okay. stuff so, so the one i drove was like 95 it's, yeah. it's 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 not chump change yeah. and like but the it's gtr there. better than anything cheaper than it cheaper than anything better than it What's, oh, your, what's your opinion of the uh, Corvette, the new one? The new one? Yeah. Have you driven one yet? Yeah. It's good, isn't it's it? It's really good. It's quite good. I didn't want to like it. No, you you got to like it. Yeah, it's very it's good. Very, it's very good. And you can tell right away it's more chassis than engine, can't oh, you? for sure. So the Z06 with the fucking crazy motor that's coming out. And that's how they made it. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's going to be, be so one. good. It's on the way. That'll be the one. Have you driven one yet, Sirio? <laughs> no, I haven't. 
They're shockingly good. They're shockingly good. Yeah. And what they've done in the IMSA program this year is nothing but a marvel. Like first year out, just yep. killing it. Just I haven't followed it. Murdering? Yeah. yeah. Murdering. Yeah. I mean, just. Their really. first race, they like got seventh and sixth, and it was like, ooh, I don't know about this. And then the next, what, two races <laughs> in a row, it was like one, two, one, two. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. yeah, the pace is amazing. No, they've found an amazing balance between ride and handling. Yeah. Um, and, but they've never the, done. They've never done that. They've never done it to that degree. In, in modern times. No, they haven't. They haven't to that degree because if you have a front engine design Can't the, do it. The, the control arm geometries and all right. that don't right. allow for such things yeah, you exactly. need a mid-engine design with nice long control arms mm-hmm. that come in that's mm. how they do it that's how they, <laughs> that's how they did it at Porsche they paid that's attention yeah. 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 yeah how can we get this to be better no, it's, Let's it's change unbelievable. It completely. I can't wait to see. I'm actually excited for for the 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 the, the Revy one, uh-huh. and I'm also excited for the the the, the crazy twin turbo slash hybrid one. I think that'll be cool too. Yeah, I think yeah, I'm so excited. Too. Yeah, me too. I, I think the last the C7 ZR1 that I drove Ooh. was cr- a crazy car. Yeah, that's good. That's a buy and hold. Yeah, if you I, can hold I, that for I, 25 really? years. Really, buy and hold. I like yeah. the C7. They sold like there's six s- of them. Yeah, they're so gangster, 25 right? years is not going to let you have gas it had, in, in well, California. It had anymore. all the hallmarks. That shit is bullshit. <laughs> know, you know it. Know. How many <laughs> 2050. Time, how many Mr. times Newcomb. have you heard them drop some uh, 100 miles per gallon <laughs> cafe rating by 2028 and then they on page four two years later oh, we, we rolled it back we, we to were 27. Just yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's all bullshit. I do oh, agree C7 with you. I, I think the C7 is a good hold. I yeah. agree C7 with you. C7 ZR1. It's a good scary. Hold. Yep. Very tons of power, mm. enormous wing, yep. very mm. loud, very American. and they didn't sell a lot of them because no. people were scared of them. Mm-hmm. Rightly fucking so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, I got my son a high school graduation present, and then he yeah. died two weeks later. Right. Yeah, just... <laughs> What's your long term hold right now? Oh, long term. Yeah. How about how about we get a buy, sell, and a hold a from each of you? Hold. What do you think? Ooh. What are we, what are we buying? What are we selling? And what are we holding right now? Ooh. No pressure. That's always fun. Um, buy, sell, hold. That's good. I would, I would sell. Well, I have sold a lot of things that were fifties and sixties related cars because mm-hmm. I think people are aging out of them. Um, I sold my GT three fifty Shelby. I sold an MGA Twin Cam. Mm-hmm. Um, sold a couple of BMWs, and and I think there's. Those were things that I was just bored. I was bored with them because I didn't go immediately go into the garage and, and drive them. Mm-hmm. Uh, 65 Fuel Yvette Roadster, great car, the, 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 the rarest production Corvette, if you will, with only 700-odd examples being made. Is that then. all? Yeah. And it was just a th- become a thing. It just it was like no fun to drive. So I was getting rid of things that were no fun. Uh, buying... I don't think I'm buying a damn thing other than the G-Wagon. For, for, for the my, new one. My, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I love to hold um, on my 911 GTS Targa, the 13,000 miles on it now. The shooting brake has 2,500 miles on it. Uh, we went out to uh, look at a, a 906 Porsche a couple hundred miles away from Boston last week. Took the 500E, 1992 500E. Oh those are great. It was awesome. That is a hold. That's a hold. That's a hold. That's a hold. That's, a hold. That's, a hold. Um, That's such a good car. I yeah. think I'm done with my Volkswagen thing. I don't think I need Thank that. God. My uh, yeah, my Porsche right. guru Marco at TLG had a had a 500E for about 18 months, mm-hmm. flat money in, money out, yeah. free free car for 18 months. He was about it. It was lovely. Very mm-hmm. nice car. So I got it lucky. tracks so right. well, drives so nice. Yeah, right, those are easy. Boxy Benzes, yeah, boxy Benzes that are modern enough to still be used every day. I think are holds. Yeah, yeah. those Definitely. and box Chevys. Yeah, box, box Chevys. Uh, and box Benzes. Buy three twenty eights. Three twenty eights. Three twenty eights. They're coming up. <laughs> you hear? You heard it here <laughs> first, folks. Gl- glad to have helped, Matt. <laughs> I'm, a, I'll, I'm a market driver on yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, I just not? I just reevaluated with Haggerty because you know my my Haggerty insurance is uh, declared value, uh-huh. and so I called to insure the Ferrari, um, and I was like, hey, while we're at it, mm-hmm. uh, what's what should uh, what is the the your the, the value of boosted. the the Vanquish is up, but the yep. value of the Countach, I said, because I had it. The declared value is the purchase yeah. price. It's up fifty eight percent in two years. That's solid. And um, that's a Haggard. That's at a Haggerty. Uh, Haggerty excellent. Not even Haggerty. Well, not even the top top show car level. So like, mm-hmm. whoa. Well, I think there we a, go. Mm-hmm. There's a paradigm shift going on age wise. Eighties, nineties is in. It's it totally. Eighties, nineties. My my Volkswagen GTI Callaway Turbo. Oh. So that's that's where's that. Diff- 
Uh, I, is it I, in Boston? Yeah. I, oh, it was oh, my God. A, it's so good. The I just, best. Oh, my God. 19,000-mile car. Oh, that's the best. And it's that's brand, very good. It's brand new underneath. I See, mean, that, I think, is a buy. A yeah. buy is um, is a brand-name tuner cars right. from yeah. the 80s with, yeah. a, with a brand-name package on it. And when yeah. ja- and when breakers and when <laughs> matching wardrobes and bag phones for members everybody only. for sure bag phones for everybody that'd be so good. you know what I'm seeing well a lot real now. AMG real Alpina mm-hmm. real mm-hmm. when they, when those were still different independent companies. from yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, that that stuff is it's it's taking off it's yeah re- well it's taken off five years ago would have yeah. been the time to buy all the early AMGs correct yeah. uh, there's a uh, um, oh wait I just I literally just brain farted. <laughs> Mm-hmm. By all the AMGs. Where was I before that? BMW, 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 BMW Callaway. Oh my God! Brand but name Euro Tuners. Fuck! It's gone. Never mind. <laughs> I'll come back. Later. It's down the highway. <laughs> uh, it's gone. I don't know what happened, but it's definitely gone. Well, we went from yeah somehow uh, the 906 tour to this, which was great, and uh, you know keeping customers engaged. That's right. that's the buy. What I would tell people to buy cars yeah. that they can use and have experiences with. I mean, if nothing else, out of this whole wacky last year. It's who would have predicted that this was the year people had to use their cars right. to settle their brains. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was That's very important. Point. It That's was very point. important yeah. to have something that, you know, uh, I've been locked in. My kids are home, getting homeschooled. Life sucks. I can't travel. We can't take a family vacation. I can go into my garage and disappear for a couple hours yeah. on the road. And that's what a lot of a lot of friends and clients did. And I think that's what really brought them um, into the into the fold for. I want to have an experience with my car. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Miles are cheap usually. Oh yeah. There's not. I mean, yeah. unless you're really buying a car that where all the value is dependent on being this ultra low. Everywhere oh, except I hate, that. I hate that. And right. maybe even yeah. then, are the yeah. if you were to buy a car, it was a rare car, the right car, right? But it had it had low miles, really low miles, right? And you wanted to drive it. Are those miles cheap or are those miles expensive? Expensive. Oh, those they're, are expensive. They're miles. expensive miles. But are they worth it? I think it's uh, in the eye of the beholder. I mean, if I walk into one more collection where everything in the collection is, has no miles, yeah. it's perfect. It's yeah, in the it's wrapper. That's not, not good. It's not. I mean, to go, me, go I get collect it. Collect butterflies. Yeah. I mean, go. I mean, because like Spike and Zuckerman, they like to buy low mile shit yeah. and then drive it yeah. because they want. They're willing to pay for the experience yeah. of driving this car in a new like state yeah. and not a re- uh, restored state or a, driving a the driving the value right out of it. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Well, yeah. yeah pretty well, much. I mean, if you buy a ten thousand mile X versus a forty thousand mile X, right. and it's a thirty year old car, buy the forty thousand yeah, mile right. one and put the ten. Th- what are you doing with the three twenty eight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then put the ten thousand miles on it. And yeah. if you love it, put another ten thousand miles on it. Yeah. But twelve hundred miles a year for thirty years yeah. is the right number of miles a oh, year yeah, for. Yeah. Ferrari. That's yeah. very good. Oh, oh, I'm going to do a lot more than that. I'm a fucking daily this day. That's killer. You should. That's well, awesome. Why not? What are you waiting for? Life's, you know. Bro, I, I say this all the time. In 2016 to 2018, in right. that period of time, I spent, spent and didn't get back right. $22,000 to drive a Ford Focus RS. That's what it cost me to drive a fucking Focus for eight, 19 months. You think I'm going to you think I'm going to drive $22,000 of value out of a $65,000 Ferrari? I don't think Fuck so. Fuck no, I'm yeah, not. No. I think that's I can a put great 100, point. 100,000 miles on the car and still get 50 for it. That's a great point. <laughs> you know I, think, what I, mean? and that's, like, I think it's a real challenge chance. at the upper end of the echelon of the collector car market. I think I hope there's I mean, everyone knows in 2019 we had this explosion at my family's collection. It was kind of crazy, but it changed my father, our whole family's perspective. And kind of adjunctly, it changed a lot of our customers' perspective because we were right. like the poster children of unfortunate events that can happen. And my father had a, another aha moment of like, why am I not driving these? What, like, do, I, what, what do I, do I, I have What am I doing? What do I, right. what do I have them? Why are we not drinking the really great wine? Yeah. What, do, what yeah. are we waiting for? Yeah. And, and like we meet so many collectors and when they do something like some crazy experience, it's the camaraderie of it. It's like you're not going to take these cars with you when you go, but you're going to take the memories. That's why I like what Lee and them are doing with the safari cars. Yeah. And it's really, they're really making sure that they give the, the customers who buy the safari cars right. interesting things to do with them. Yeah. Right. Um, you have yours still? 
What's that? Didn't you have a yeah, safari, my, uh, safari car? My brother Rory does. Oh, it's your brother's yeah, yeah, car, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The purple it's a one. Beautiful the purple yeah. car. Yeah, it's killer. That he thing drives rules. the shit out of it too. Does he drive it a lot? Yeah, yeah. Good, good. Yeah. yeah, mine is almost my daily driver. Or has been for a couple years. Oh, is that what the picture is downstairs on the sound? That yeah, that's my. I'm Safari 14. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. Cassis Red. Can I just call you that from now on? Sure. <laughs> it's my ID tag. Safari 14. <laughs> no, it's up. You know, I just sent that car up to. Up to Marco, uh, we're recamming it. Uh-huh. I'm gonna, I'm, I want to bring the power band down uh-huh. a little bit. It's uh-huh. got kind of this high end cam on it. Right. And I'm, I'm never at 7,000 RPM in the Safari, so bring the power yeah, band no, down yeah. a little bit and uh, an easier good. clutch. It's got like a, a, it's a, like a, some fucking race clutch. Heavy. In it. It's like you could ki- clutch kick it a million times and not break it, but like. I don't need that to go to Ralph's. So none of you, <laughs> <laughs> babe, I'll be right back. <laughs> none of your cars are even remotely a duplicate of one another, are they? They're all different experiences. Because no, got, they're so different. Right. I don't like. To, I don't even want to be in the same world with the cars. I want to have a, this experience and this experience. And this. Right. although now, I mean, we've got '86 Ferrari, '87 Porsche, and '88 Lamborghini. Oh, so, so there a is thing. a theme. Yeah. And then my wife, you know, my wife How drives a '91 right. Mitsubishi Delica. Uh, Ooh, the van. Did she really? Yeah. She got a van life. She, I bought it for myself as a shop truck, and, yeah. and she was like, um, I will be that's taking a, this. It's that's, hers. A bitch and, that's a bitch and ride, though. 40,000 kilometers. Does everyone it's just give a thumbs sick. up? When Everybody loves it. Yeah, it's left-hand everybody. drive? Right-hand drive. It's right, I was going to say, drive. it's going to be a right-hand drive. Mid-engine, it came from the turbo island of diesel. Japan. Oh, yeah. That's badass. It rules. <laughs> that's killer. <laughs> captain seat, swivel captain's oh chairs. It like the new Kia Telluride. They, they were doing it decades before. Dude. I would love to do a show from that. Like us all <laughs> riding down the road. Let's go to In-N-Out Burger. 67 miles an hour. Yeah. It's a great LA runabout. Not such a good road tripper. Yeah. <laughs> it's not fast. <laughs> it's great until you get to a hill. <laughs> but dude, my you know my wife, she she makes a great living. She could buy pretty much any car she wants. Right. She she wants that. She loves it. She loves that. She wouldn't rather drive anything else. You married above yourself. She fucking rules. My wife kicks ass. All right. So your wife kicks ass. Mm-hmm. If she could, bu- well, I'll, I'll ask you this because you're not going to answer for your wife. If you could, God came down. Said, Matt, go ahead. One car free today, this brand man. new, 2020, 2021. You can have it. Pick one. For me or for my wife? For well, me? For you. And what do you think she what would, would say? Okay. What would I buy? Brand A brand new given. car that I would buy? Given to you. you given can, to me. Given to you. Mm. You can have it for free. What's my... <laughs> oh, I love these dream garage. Yeah. Dream garage. This is like um, mental masturbation at the best. I mean, if we really want to go on, go on an absurd <laughs> absurd level, I would say yeah. something like a McLaren 720. Yeah, it's okay. Ooh. Which I think it's really... It's free. It's checks. your Christmas present yeah. to yourself. The McLaren 720 is uh, some next level shit. It's pretty epic. Um, and... Uh, yeah, I would do that. I would do that. I'm. I have to say, that's the, surprising. The G550 outside. I'm driving. I'm very impressed with. Yeah. Um, I don't I'm glad think I'd want that. that as my only car. But, you know, or or like a you know 911 S something like that. The new the the 992 or I, I mean they don't make it anymore like a GT3 Touring. Mm-hmm. I yeah. can live with a GT3 Touring forever. I Just can't, stop I, there. I, I don't like the new 911 nose. I can't. The I can't, nose. I can't wrap my head around the square it's hood. It's very McLaren ish. Mm. It'll uh, lose it very a little Sony bit. PlayStation oh. generation design. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it, it's one of those. I usually don't like Porsche redesigns, and then I when I drive them for a while yeah. and I don't see them from the driver's yeah, seat, yeah. I kind of forget. That's fair. I daily my touring. Call that cayenning. People think <laughs> people think I'm nuts because I daily my touring and I got like twelve no, thousand miles daily on it. And, I, and I do, and it's yeah. like it's awesome. They make a snow tire fitment for that. Yep, <laughs> yeah, they, they do. Yeah. Preuninger is like all about that. Oh, oh it's awesome. Preuninger is like, I guess I had the snow tire. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. Like he DMs oh, man, me. It's yeah. yeah now that you mention it, shit. I don't I like the square hood. Yeah, it's something too square about the front of the car. I feel you. You. But they drive really, really oh, yeah, good. Sure. Hard to argue with that. Yeah. Are you Are on they, board with the 996? Like, you know how it's been the talk for eight years? No. Of the, yeah. No. <laughs> I love when people try to spin this story on the 996, you know? Like, and it's not because of how they look. I don't give a shit. Yeah. I actually don't. Li- There's a couple specific things about how they drive that I don't personally like. I think the shifters feel weird. I think the clutches feel rubbery. And I think mm-hmm. the steering feels vague in a 996. Yeah. That's and just and my the big power one. cars are dangerous. I think they're dangerous. Things. With the GT2? The GT2s? Yeah. yeah. I have a friend who's got a GT2, and all he wants in his whole life is for me to say that I like his GT2. He's waiting for you? <laughs> Please, any, And any, I know any, he wants that, and I won't give him the satisfaction. Uh, any, anytime we ever took one <laughs> no in trade, for you. it was like, there was no threat of me ever keeping one of those cars when they came into inventory. 
It's like I cannot going to go down the road in this car, and it's twitchy, mm. and it's just the boost comes on all wrong. It, well, I, that's a good hallmark yeah. of a collector car. Yeah. yeah, a car that drives badly and is scary, people will want down the road. <laughs> Do you know how scary this thing is? Scary, scary. This thing's fucking scary. It's scary. Bro. Pep Road. It's a widow. <laughs> if one more person says Widowmaker, I'm blowing my brains out. Like, <laughs> it's like people like I, I'm that the lawyers for uh, Paul Walker's daughter's <laughs> family when they sued Porsche, they right. called me right. and they wanted me to testify for them how dangerous the how car was. Dangerous the is car it dangerous? Was. Yeah. And I said, you guys need to understand something about how cars are marketed. Yeah. Right. Being dangerous was the entire marketing yeah. pitch. <laughs> the whole car. point. Yeah. That's the whole reason they sold new. That's the whole reason they sell now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Being it's scary is it. That's the whole thing. Yeah. That's what yeah, I said. That's true. I mean, yeah. it, it's a shame what happened to him, but you, you know, that car was a weapon. Tires you know? killed hey, Paul and Roger. Yeah. The yeah. 10-year-old tires on that what car? What are you yeah. doing? The fuck right. out of here. That's, yeah. a, that's just bad decisions. It's just right. bad decision making. It's not Porsche's I've been problem. on that corner. You can take that corner at 90 miles an hour yeah. in a Prius. You can. It's <laughs> yeah. a giant open sweeper. Right. But the tires are 10 years old on that car. Yeah. They're like popsicle sticks. Fucking they're, just they're terrible. Wood. Yeah. Yeah. And it is one of the most rewarding driving experiences. Driving a Carrera GT lives up to the hype. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. And that's why people are buying them. That's why the market's strong again for them because they keep every then, 12 then, months yeah, it does this. It's just a big the time and down, way down. Right before the 918 came out would yeah. have been the time. Oh, yeah. For sure. Although, interestingly, the four, the four GTs didn't do the same curve yeah. when the new one came out. No. Why is that? Well, those have held up, though. Those were Steady. never... They were, yeah, they've but never no been monster been, jump. Yeah, no monster jump. Too many of them? Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Every and auction's got... Uh, who is it? Ham- Haggerty? Haggerty did an article. There was a very interesting study. The more four GTs at an auction, yeah. the higher all the, the average sale price was for that auction. Really? Really strange. Wouldn't have thought. It. How how does that even enter? How do you get that? Those algorithm? are like baseball. Those are like that's, that's, those are like baseball that's, algorithms. Yeah. I mean, no I mean it, that's it must that's be a phase. massive yeah. coincidence. It was from Haggerty Magazine a couple weeks, ago, uh, months ago. There's a guy who like yeah. is the numbers running right. guy. Yeah, well, I've Way to go, some Matt. Of You're just sabotaged. And, and some of those analytics that they do, we sort of watch them in these meetings, and it's like, how did you connect these dots? How did you <laughs> Causation figure this out? Oh my god! Oh my god! That was the best. That was awesome. Well, but with the four. GT, I think, what it's a big motorcycle, Matt. There's yeah. nothing you can do with it. You can't, you can't put luggage in. You can't yeah. put an extra set of keys in. There's no the place for your one. cell phone. Yeah, yeah. No, the old one. The old one is first of all, you can't park anywhere where you can't swing the doors so yeah, wide open. <laughs> you know, no regular parking spaces. <laughs> you can carry uh, three tennis see. balls in the front trunk yeah. and or a sandwich. <laughs> There's no hidden little pocket anywhere in the car. So That's I think true. what's kept that down mm-hmm. is the usability factor is next to nil. I mean, you're gonna just ship your luggage ahead if you want to drive guess, somewhere. Does a CGT have a trunk up front? It mm-hmm. does. Does yes, it, it has does. a fairly regular yep. size. It's got a front, really right? nice little watch hidden watch uh, department in the in the driver's door. You just pop it open. You put all your rollies. Oh, really? you put your rollies in there. And you're <laughs> put off. your Ren and Stimpy, watch, and Stimpy there. watch. There are off. pieces because I just filmed a uh, a four GT four, and like there's parts of the interior that look still look timeless. You yeah. know, like some of the uh, like milled aluminum knobs and stuff. They yeah. look really good. But yeah. some of the other parts in in the like the door cards and things. Yeah. You're like this looks like yeah. a Ford. Like it looks like it could have come out of a cheap F-150. I'm not trying right. to just like connect those dots. Like it really it is super simple and plasticky. Yeah. So I think if you're if you're a discerning buyer and you look at those two cars next to each other, like you're going to find a, a few more problems maybe with the GT. Even though the the exterior of that thing just it's the yeah. balls. Unbelievable. Yeah. It's wonderful. Unbelievable. I mean, it's going to be gorgeous forever. Well, it's when Ford owned Aston Martin and, and you, you know, in the, in the late 2000s or the early 2000s, even into the late 1990s, it's all of a sudden you get in the car and go, the steering wheel came out of a Lincoln, Lincoln product. Yeah. You know, it was like, wait a minute, some mm-hmm. of this switch gear is from Ford. And that's, that's you know, when they were starting to take effect and in in the super expensive cars, that a lot of them are just the European cars, mm-hmm. you'd see these weird, you know, U.S. bits, bin, you know, parts and bins uh, pieces that were like, well, this doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, why is this in here? So it's, it's because a small company hand-built cars and you need to have an right. airbag. Yeah. So the airbag had to come from somewhere. You it's know? one of those things. I think when you drive a Ford GT, first gen, it's an amazing experience. Once you're yeah. in the car driving it, right? Yeah. But it's the whole usability. It's not the first thing you're going to gravitate going out to your garage. And if it's one there, you can't take it to dinner. You yeah. can't take your, you know, you can't take it yeah. anywhere really without planning ahead. Which yeah. I think is what's kept 
so the, price the, is down. It's the wrong mm-hmm. end of the novelty versus usability spectrum. Sure. Correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gorgeous I mean, things. Think about the whole echelon of GT3 RSs starting with from 2007 to now. And all these GT3 RSs that are out in the universe and all these paint to sample cars right. are people actually really driving them. Because, you know, it's it's an interesting phenomenon. And back to my point about 996s, my buy would be a 996 GT3 RS because it is truly a homo- homologation car. There are so much cup stuff in that car. It is one of the most rewarding driving experiences you can have. And in today's era where everyone has, a G- there's a lot of RS collections going oh, from yeah. 73 to the new GT2 RS. It is a standout uh, among that hierarchy. Well, it's also very few of them. I mean, Porsche is the, what a, what a great company for making their last product utterly obsolete. In their new product, <laughs> it's, they sell, you know, right. 10 times as many or three times as many. You know, we're only going to make so many of these. And then we continue it into next year. Yeah. And then we're not going to build the stick and we're going to build the stick. And then we're not going to be, you know, they're geniuses at that. And everybody falls mm-hmm. for it. I mean, it is Lucy <laughs> with the football with Charlie Brown every fall. It's like, yeah. come pay, on, get Pay this. more for less. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, do we have uh, some questions for the mm-hmm. from the people? We I think we probably have a few by now. We must. Yeah, we got a few. Uh, let's get to let's get to what uh, let's get to what the folks have to say. Fine. Vlad says, "How far do we know how far along in development the the Vonin Shadow Drive Classic for G Body 911 is? Would you consider adding to the far, Safari? Have you seen? Have you guys seen this thing? I have no idea no what idea. you said. A company yeah, called Vonin mm-hmm. makes an aftermarket hybrid system for uh, Porsche. They have it for the 991 generation car, and I've driven it. Mm-hmm. It's very cool. 75 horsepower uh, with a battery wow. that goes in the frunk. Oh, this was and a motor in, Mar- control. in March. You yeah. were just going to yeah. go drive this uh, yeah, when yeah, I was yeah, here yeah. last. Okay. How was it? Impressive? Seamless. You really? don't. You pretty much don't know it's there, other than you hear a, just this tiny bit of electrical, ee, like a little he when you, when you're when you go flat. Right. Um, Did it take away from the sensations of not having no, combustion? No, it's very seamless, and mm-hmm. it, it it replaces the flywheel of the car. So yeah. the engine and the gearbox, they don't even know the car's there. Wow. And so they told <laughs> me they were working on what they were calling, I believe, the the classic. Um. Um. Oh my god! Oh, this I like is the pizza bullshit. Uh, Do you have a problem? Is there some? Like, <laughs> you need to go, Matt. Did your um, mom it's, <laughs> you know, I'm. I run into an issue sometimes trying to do a podcast while running a brick and mortar business. Sure, I don't right. actually hire a GM <laughs> to come to work when I'm just for me to do a show. And well, you well, guys we, ship cars, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you mean there's a problem just with to, the shipper? Without giving anything away, there's not a problem with the shipper. The shipper is on motherfucking point. JP Logistics is the jam. Yes, they yeah. are. The shop where this vehicle is getting picked up mm-hmm. told me a time he would be there, mm-hmm. and he's not, not there. there. Yeah, and this is the third time the same sure. thing has happened. Very reliable guys. And the client for this particular vehicle <laughs> is international. Yeah. Never even met them, so it's all this email cycle bullshit. So I'm getting phone calls and texts right now about this person's not answering, mm, and right. we're trying to talk about something here. And I apologize for it being distracting, <laughs> no. but it's kind of difficult to juggle a few things sometimes. It sounds like the car biz. That's, Vaughn, like a, that's car our business. daily business. That's our the Vaughn in thing, the <laughs> point was, they're making one for classic G-body cars. Huh. So the idea is Porsche horsepower is super expensive. Yep. Building a, a, a an air cooled engine could be twenty or thirty thousand yep. dollars. This system, mm-hmm. you put the battery in the frunk, you put replace your flywheel, you get seventy five horsepower added to your G body car without any other modifications, and it's totally reversible. Amazing. I think it would be great for the nine thirties. Yeah, it as, is a, too. Torque as a torque filler for the turbo cars. for the turbos. It's it almost so fabulous. It's not an electric replacement no. engine in the car. No, okay. gas engine. Because yeah. this, this seems like um, if you don't want a real girlfriend, it's that, like that, a, it's that can like have a, its problems and have a real life experience with it, you buy a real doll well, and fuck look, that. I've never I mean, seen I an just, aftermarket hybrid system before. I it's am, interesting. No, it is very I, interesting. I, it's like a cure system. It's really cool. You could you could have a yeah basically yeah it's itself. You don't have to plug the car in. Ever. It's self regenerating. It, who wakes up one day yeah. and goes, "This is what I have to do as an engineer"? I, yeah. I mean, this is. I mean, I think is it answering are, a question nobody's ever asked. Potentially, yeah. yes, I mean, potentially, but it's also. It, I think it is an interesting prospect no. for air cooled. 
I cars think so. that want a, they want a little more power, but Look, you don't want to take apart the original engine. And particularly for G-body, G50 cars, which I'm not the biggest fan of. I mean, they're great cars, don't get me wrong. I'm probably going to get punished for this, but I just don't think, they don't have the modern punch. And, uh, you know, I love an SE. I love a three liter car. I love the 915 transmission. But for this application, I think that's really now adds some kind of significant experience value of just experiential. Why don't you just buy a different car if you want something with <laughs> well, more I mean, power. there's I an mean, argument I, for that as well. I mean, this hi. is so beyond our daily wick. This is not even close I to I love me. my girlfriend, but I don't like her chest. Right. And I, she got to get her teeth done, and she's got to change the color of her hair, and well. then she's got to be an inch taller. Why don't you have a different girlfriend? How many marriages, I mean, well, did, look, how many marriages does it take for you to figure that out? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people modify cars all Three. the time. <laughs> People modify cars all the time in all sure. kinds of yeah, different ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, but uh, personally, it's not my cup of tea. Mo- it, it, 20 years ago, nobody modified anything. And then, well, that's bullshit. Well, no. I got to. I got to rephrase that. Let me introduce there you was a man named Alloy Roof. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. his a car, his yellow yeah, bird. Yeah. I still don't get it. Um, <laughs> but um, I, I, I'm not drinking that Kool Aid. Um, there, it is is become more regular and people appreciate the Rod Emery Singer's pick one yes. of the world now yes. where they didn't so much appreciate them 20, 30 years ago. Well, that's where and the name Outlaw came w- from. Well, so uh, I, I get it. Um, I think a lot of it is done We could do a whole show on with the <coughs> people who, who think they're improving something and there's a lot of cool... Yeah. I don't know. The, the roof yeah. thing, I know... Listen, there's a lot of there's a lot of he did it so I want to do it in mm-hmm. that world. I don't buy it. You're not telling me one guy was smarter than the entire engineering program in, in Stuttgart. I don't, I don't buy I don't, it. Just well, no, not necessarily. He just had different priorities. Sure, right. that's it's not tuning isn't about being smarter. Tuning is about a shift in priorities. If you say this car came like this from the factory and it was designed to appeal to this broad an array of customers. Well, I'm just right here. Mm -hmm. So I can narrow the focus of my car with a firmer suspension or with more power or with some other kind of thing that will shift the focus of my car towards what I want it to do, probably at the expense of something else. Well, and roof, I suppose, to a degree, has been far more successful with creating something that is widely accepted as a success versus Gambala. Or totally one, true. Or, you know, <laughs> not so, being the, kidnapped it, and murdered in South Africa is a good way to yeah, start. Yeah, it's a really good way to start. <laughs> <laughs> oh my it, God, that's good. That was good. <laughs> the, the Koenig cars. What was the other Stepped one? That yeah, Willie Koenig. Koenig. Willie Koenig. Koenig. Yeah. Um, DPs, what was, bro. What, Deep the DPs, the, the Rod yeah. Stewart oh, DP the, cars. Um, I mean. Yeah. I love the DPs. They're so trashy. Oh, God. I mean, right now, I think a Koenig Koenig Ferrari right now would probably bring some money. I think that's a brand name tuner car. At the Crushers? Where? No, am I wrong? Really? Am I I wrong? A Koenig Ferrari? Do you think a Koenig Ferrari Testarossa with a twin (laughs) turbo kit on it would bring money in at an auction sale? I I think think it would. I think so. I think guys are, because we're the same vintage. I think guys are like, (laughs) I I, I get into that. Maybe it's my old, feeble, 60-year-old age. I just can't wrap my head around it. It's been happening in Japan. You talk to the guys who sell the imported Skylines and stuff, and and there's there's two ways to bring a premium on a Skyline. One, totally stock. That's right. And the other is, is a full build Godz- by a name brand shop. Godzilla. Yeah. yeah. Like and there's a company in Japan called Garage Saurus yeah. that does whole builds. That's like right. yeah. Garage Saurus so cool. car is big money. Yeah. yeah. And it's interesting there They're because the HKS. all the people that I know that have dealt with the Japanese folks over the years, it's an interesting um, <laughs> client base because not a lot of roads to drive on in yeah. Japan at those. I mean, you're building these marvelous things <laughs> only to go like stop yeah. and go traffic yeah. in Tokyo. You, you know? gotta go I mean, way outside get, of Tokyo. Yeah, this is a do. sidebar, but I have like a total Fast and Furious like fantasy of going to Tokyo and like the movie <laughs> yeah. and like running up the mountain. Go buy like, a skyline. You can. Go to, yeah. you can. Yeah. It's not that hard. Yeah. We could wear those new shoes we bought there's yesterday a, that uh, look like Drake shoes. <laughs> there's a place called <laughs> the Balenciaga. Yeah, Bal- there's a place <laughs> called uh, Fun to Drive in yeah. Japan outside of Tokyo and it's a rental place for Japanese enthusiasts car and yeah. it's on the toge road yeah so you just go there perfect. and you're just on the road yeah i'm gonna fabulous. do that i'm gonna stuff my face with sushi for yes. three days straight and <laughs> it's perfect yeah drink red bull if you haven't <laughs> fucked with skylines before if you've never spent time with them they're amazing they're amazing cars yeah amazing to drive yeah they are. i've only been so in fun. one as a passenger they're i was impressed fucking fun yeah. man they are they're fun. great 
I love Skyline so yeah. much. I'll probably buy another one. And all the young people soon. love it too. Like you pull up and it gets a party going for if you sure. You want to meet yeah. dudes. Yeah, if you want <laughs> dudes. That's cars in general, really. <laughs> what, what age dude do you want to meet? Exactly. That's exactly. the what car you buy. Exactly. Wait, Are you a baller, dude? Yeah. Dude, okay. those are the key. Bro- oh, sorry, go ahead. Do you have oh, enough, Steve, bro? I want to ask you a question. So if yeah. you're, you're not really into the modified stuff, um, does something change if. If the car, if the car's driving experience is then vouched for by the factory, if it's like let's say Roof built a car, yep. and then Porsche absorbed Roof like the, like AMG did, AMG and now did suddenly LP, it's like BMW oh, with Alpina. right, so yeah. now it's suddenly it's a factory car, even though it has the same driving experience, power, everything else it had before. I think you're going to find that the factory is going to water it down a tiny True. bit so that it's the build quality might be better or whatever that better is. Yeah, I'd buy that. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm malleable enough where I'll buy into it. I just don't get some of the things that, uh, I, listen, I don't get Singer. I, I, I don't understand it one bit um, now for look, the money. You're being I, a little I, bit contradictory I, here because okay. I know Serio. Steve-O has a Speedster and he's used this for all these events and it's a Will Hoyt. It's a monster. It's a badass car. <laughs> it looks great, but it's totally different from the production car oh, it was. Oh, sure. So I am talking out of both sides of my mouth. Correct. It comes I just to, wanted so to okay thank you for tearing car, me the second only in the way that I do exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks for tearing me the yes. second it's asshole. It's the internet. Right exactly. <laughs> I want to call everyone else douchers, but not. Damn it. <laughs> uh, I suppose uh, with me making one right. for myself and right. tweaking brake. Uh, no, I didn't tweak brakes. I tweaked engine, transmission, mm-hmm. uh, put a later 741 transmission in it, put a 2.1 liter engine in it that makes 152 horsepower instead of 60. But now that's slow because yeah. he's got the 2.2 out. Yeah, and it's yeah I know. It's, it's, it's bogus. So, so but I Hippie didn't. Hippie Pete's getting one. He's going to be <laughs> smoking be your 2. ass. He's going to be 2.2. Yeah. And then Dents is getting the 2.2 twin plug. Jesus. So boy. we're all going to, you know. Can you imagine driving a little speedster with 165 horsepower? No. I mean, that's no, a thanks. ripper. Yeah. No, thanks. No, so I actually, did. by the way, by no thanks, I mean, yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> Sign me I up. Will, I will have that. Smoking tire in effect. Come the, every that. time I get in a speedster, it feels like, it feels like it's just made of paper. Yeah. <laughs> so so flimsy, those little things. I mean, I know they're not, but they we feel it. We looked at it. a but Seattle 300 BC yesterday, and that's what I said. Oh I said, God, that like, car is, first of all, it's, <laughs> it's slightly smaller than this table, uh-huh. and... I just said, it's like going on the road in a Kleenex box. Oh, I God, mean, that, I, was, that was owned, the quote yeah, of the day. It was like, it was oh, my God. It's it, so was, da- it makes a, Yo- it a Lotus was, Europa seem like a Mack truck. That was a, that um, was a fun visit yesterday. So, yeah, I, I, I'll buy into it. And, yes, I'm, I'm – I'm, thank you, Cam, for calling me out on modifying I'm sorry my I had one to. car. That, you would do it to me. And you'd be like, Ugh. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Dude, brah, what Dude, are you bra, doing? Bra. Do, do you, you even lift? Do you even, do you even do legs, brah, you and you for, drive your cars? Dude, you have a built GTR, Steve. What are you saying? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you brought you bought the RX-7 from Fast and Furious, man. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Cameron. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> why you're why you're ruining my mojo? Uh, so worst. Uh, worst Christian <laughs> says, yeah. What is the worst driving experience for your dollar? What costs <laughs> the most and drives the worst? There's well, got to be plenty cars, of cars that I've owned. The Rolls Royce Phantom II from 1928 <laughs> probably costs a million dollars. It probably drives like a fucking tractor. Like a Tuttle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, th- any brass era car, really, right? Well, I don't yeah. think that's what the question's implying. But No, maybe it's personal. I mean, I've watched some people really have terrible experiences in Senna's. That's an expensive mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's By terrible experiences, do you mean into walls and off and just cr- crunched, or do you just mean un- not enjoyable? Not enjoyable. Mm-hmm. Um, Everyone thinks they want a race car for the street, but they don't really mean that. Shit. No, and I mean in Rolls Royces, yeah, they're damn expensive. But you take anything that's a, yeah. you take any top of the food chain car, especially if you've if you've optioned something to death. <laughs> that's where yeah, the car the car was one hundred and twenty thousand dollars base, but I paid two hundred and ten mm-hmm. for mine because yeah. of leather, paint, this, that, exactly. different tail lights. That's a bad dollar. That that you're losing money quickly. Yeah. unless you keep the car for twenty years. We yeah. were we were you joking know. about this kind of off topic on topic last night. We we're joking at dinner about. 
uh, guys who buy cars that are not vintage car guys. And so they oh, buy a seven God. figure car going, whatever it is, rare Porsche, whatever it is. And then they drive it and they call you up and they just bought it. And they're like, you know what? I'm not a vintage car guy. <laughs> The romance of this. Uh, <laughs> I've had that. That's really funny. But it happens on a daily, on a monthly That's basis. Really with us. I, had that I learned I wasn't a vintage watch guy. I bought my first vintage watch. Really? I scratched it on the first day, and right. I went, not for me. Really? Right. Yeah. Because it, it was it, it, it just wasn't it? You were it just was plastic. Like, I, I'm a lefty, yeah. and I wear my watch on my right hand, uh-huh. um, be, sort of because of that. Right. But your right hand is also where, like, banisters and walls and shit right. are when you're walking yeah. by people. I bang that shit too out much, of my watches. too much stuff to smash. And New watches are very tough. Yeah. Old watches are not. They're no, not. not. They're so delicate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they are delicate. They're, yeah. they're dinner yeah. things. So you like Stephen's yeah. ego. Some yeah. people can't do the old. <laughs> some people don't feel comfortable driving an old car hard. You know. Or, no, or, but it's not even that. It's yeah. the I always wanted one of these, yeah. and it's almost going back to you're 50 years old and you're still thinking about your high school girlfriend. Yeah. It ain't the same. Yeah. You know, and you, you might not. You might not understand. It's, it's not like, going to start It's like fucking the girl day. now when she's 50. <laughs> yeah. right. You don't get to go back and fuck the high school version. <laughs> no, you're you're fucking, the car yeah. ages just like the girl. She's, she's, had eight, <laughs> she's had eight kids, okay? This is this is gone I'm down. Gonna the car's eight. had eight owners. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just... Next time we sit on a panel at Haggerty, let's use that analogy. By the way, Matt Farrow made a really interesting... <laughs> <laughs> Please do. Please do. For the no, audience but, out here. But your, your story last night, I mean, Cam, he's told the story a couple times in the last few days about this couple buying a 1977 Porsche for their 18-year-old son uh-huh. and promptly getting their uh, collective mommy and daddy's panties in a twist because a couple of the screws in the door were loose. Yeah, It was like, well, they were loose in 1977 <laughs> as well. I got news for you. You know, an E-Type drove like that in 1964. Yeah, yeah. You get in it now and you kind of go, this doesn't drive like my Tesla. It doesn't drive like... No shit it doesn't. It drives like something was made in 1964. Yeah. You know, manage it against its contemporaries. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I go through that with guys who want a DB5 Aston Martin. Right. Oh, you know, yeah, they drive I, like tractors. I, I want to buy a Bond yeah. car. No, you don't. No, yes, you definitely I do. don't. Yeah, no, I don't. You should do it. No, I don't. And then what was it like owning it for a year? Why are you reselling it? Well, <laughs> you know, I can't take yeah. it here. I can't take it there. It's not fast. It's, it's no air conditioning. It, you know. yeah. I disagree, though. I think tractor experiences can be fun. Like, literally, they, like, pre-A Porsches from 1950 to 1955. They have a Volkswagen steering box. They have drum brakes. Well, as long store. as you know that. But as yeah. you know yeah. that, and you go into it like Jeff Swart again we'll use yeah. OG Jeff right with drives his 53, his 53 pre- yeah and he like rallies that thing he rides it in the snow he has it sideways yeah, the, the canoe on the roof yeah, yeah. yeah the whole deal and yeah, it's just yeah. such a fun thing it's such a but you yeah. know you have to have this mindset to your point about vintage watches it's like this it's a perfect analogy because Owning, oh, you have to wind it up. You have yeah. to take care of it. You have to water it. You know, it's like yeah. the same Dude, thing. Dude, I got. Do you guys know John Bothwell? Yes. You know John? He's down in Newport. The Persang guy. The Persang guy, yeah. Right. And on top of being the Persang guy, he is a Model T enthusiast, hmm. and he owns like six or seven Model T. So he's T's. a masochist. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's what I was getting at. Yeah. Yeah, and he's just all about that he has to do something on this fucking thing every... He pretty much daily is a Model T. Yeah. And he's, you know, he's always fiddling well, with some he's shit. he's the and, right guy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's like got a guy the mindset. in the 30s, yeah. yeah. He's got the mindset yeah. for that. Like, I'm expecting to break down and yeah. I'll fix it when it breaks. Yeah. Great. But you say like 357 and a bottle of whiskey in the trunk of it because you're going to need one or the I kinda, other. I kind of well, love this I've, guy. It's kind of a hero. I've said this he about is. one of legend he, status. One of our one of our friends who shall remain nameless and I I, I was I said is he really in a car enthusiast or is he a guy that has money and can afford to buy <laughs> old cars? Oh, boy. Yeah. And it be, that's it, a rabbit it, hole. You know, that's that's one of those, yeah, I have a shit ton of money, and I think I should own these things. Right. I don't know if you actually enjoy them or you're a deal junkie. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. there's, there's also that aspect to deal it. Are you allowed to enjoy looking at them and oh, not sure. driving Oh, for them? sure. Sure. Is that okay? That's yeah. fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, different strokes for different folks. Yeah, I mean. that's that's. there's no judgment there, but I don't know that if he didn't have the money, if he would strive to have right. these cars. Would he have yeah. an affordable sports car right. if that was what right. he had? Right, well, right, More right. of this is I'm having this because it's flash and it's yeah. good for my 
influencing style, you know. Do you even have you ever have you ever talked a gentleman driver out of buying like oh. a Can Am car All or a time. Formula One car oh. and All go, listen, you will die. All the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You don't want to be that dentist <laughs> on the track. Okay. You don't want to be the moving chicane. Yeah. You know, it's actually like, contrary yeah. to belief, oh, yeah, I spend more time talking people out of buying cars and <laughs> yeah. into bu- into them buying them. So. You don't want <laughs> this. You don't. No, I do. I've always wanted one. No, you don't. Uh, and you need a friend with one. Yeah, right. yeah. And you need to drive his right. once or once a year, right. but you don't want to be the guy that owns this because yeah, it's yeah. going to end badly. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, what about what, what that's about clients lot. you have that approach you about buying a car that is way out of their league in terms of performance? Is that something where that's like, kind of oh, what I just meant? By yeah. Yeah. no, I, I mean there's ones that are like I guess I'm looking at it. The the Can Am cars can also be very finicky to own and they can right. be incredibly difficult to maintain. Are there are there also c- customers that just don't have the ability for the cars they're shopping for that you talk out of it a little bit or? I think it's more like talking them to the reality of ownership. Like, okay. what yeah. does it really look like? What's the runway, the long runway of owning something that's a comp car? You know, because they're going to require more service, they're going to require more investment, and particularly if you're going to use it. You know, we've had a lot of success lately uh, selling not, uh, four cam cars, and there's this whole black art that oh, you can't use them. Sure Actually, they're really usable if you take care of them and maintenance them, and it has a good engine rebuild. They're awesome cars to if drive. You're starting with a great baseline, it's going to be a very easy thing to maintain. Yeah, I, the the business that's usually true with anything. Well, correct. But 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 a lot of those cars suffer from having been neglected for the first ten years of their life right. with their second and third owner, and then they fell apart and were expensive to fix, and nobody could fix them. Yeah. But I, the mercenary business side of me, I've said to friends, I probably said this four or five years ago, mm-hmm. where we'd get guys and they'd say, "I want to buy this," and you kind of go, "That's not." You shouldn't have one. And if you're dead stuck on buying it, I'm a fool for not selling it to you because you're just going to buy it from somebody else and I've left all this money on the table. I will say after the fact, when you come back in six months, you probably shouldn't have bought this. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've said, you want this? I, I will give you my best. This is why you shouldn't have it. If you really, really want it, I'll find you the best one ever. Yeah. And then you'll enjoy it or you won't. <laughs> and then when you come back, you know, everything was fine until it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's that's a that's a hard that's a funny thing to do if you want to stay in business and you you want to have a reputation of of trying to save somebody from themselves yeah they, they you know you shouldn't marry that woman that is you shouldn't have that girlfriend that's this high strung crazy beautiful you know redhead and they, oh I'm gonna do it told you that was maintenance Go for it, bro. <laughs> is there is there any particular make model of car that you, that you there's a heavy buyer's remorse is there a, is there a car that repeatedly people think they want and decide they don't want very quickly. Or is it just all over the map? It's all. Oh, I think it's all. That, over I mean, that's the Carrera GT suffers from that. I mean, yeah. a lot of really? guys. I think a lot of guys think they want one, and then they get in it and try to drive it, uh-huh. and it's yeah. it's hard. Yeah. You know, it's it's not it's not a nine eighteen. No, it's a special you know? occasion. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. stay in the office. It's a special occasion car, and yeah. so you, the reality of driving one is a commitment. Yeah, you know? also it also requires a, focus. Yeah, and or it's going to bite you in the ass. Or yeah. 959. 959 is not for the yeah. the weak need. That's, and, Jeff yeah, Zwart yeah. told me that he has never owned a more expensive He's modern. never ever owned yeah. a, mo- a more expensive car. Yeah. <laughs> if, he, if he can ball yeah. out like last year Steve and I bought a 959 Sport uh, for a client and uh, I would so rather have a Sport, sport yeah. if he can pay the premium because it doesn't have the nanos, it yeah. has the different suspension. It's a far better experience. To be honest, driving a Comfort is a anticlimactic experience. Driving a 993 Turbo is more fun and rewarding yeah. than a Comfort 959. But if you, if you have to have one in a collection, I get it. But it's going to bring you to your knees at some point. I mean, it's like old. Yeah, Swartz said, yeah. even though he was the one who owned it during its period of greatest appreciation. Yeah, correct. He said the maintenance was so ridiculous, yeah. he almost didn't make any money. Yeah. Well, my, I, I owned a 1988 M5 uh-huh. from new, and that was a maintenance hog. Yeah. I mean, it was, I mean, <laughs> now they've they've come on and people want them again. I'd have another one because I'm not going to use it as a daily car. I drove you one put, once. It was fabulous. You yeah. put 15,000 miles a year on one, yeah. and you go back to BMW, and it's like, no, this is a very special engine. It needs this. It needs that. Yeah. You just gave me, you know, and then in 88, you get a $2,000 <laughs> bill for a service in 1988. It's like... What you know? This is yeah. insane. 
Given so the choice between an E30 M3 and E28 M5, the M5 is a oh. much better car. Oh, sure. Yeah. It's, it's well, it's the it's the very very first one yeah. after the M1 where they were going to start this program, and that was a hand built thing. Yeah, with an M1 the engine. engine is so good. Oh, God. And by today's standards, it's still it's so small that yeah. you don't yeah. care that the E30 is even smaller. You're like, no, this is small. This oh is, yeah, this is tiny. <laughs> it's tiny. Was, fuck, what a fucking good car. Yeah. Uh, I actually think. I think I have a client moving in today with one of those. What? Very we saw two of them yesterday. Yeah, we saw two of them in the storage yeah. place. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it was like, why? Well, yeah. you know, people got them. Yeah, they people have are them. into them. Yeah. yeah. If you like black, you like black <laughs> yes. and tan. Yeah. I like black. I like small bumpers. Let's see what's. Uh, quick watch question. Auburn oh. Van says, quick uh, question to start. Omega Planet Ocean thirty nine for a first watch. Yeah, Planet Ocean's a good watch. You can wear it. You buy it used, depreciated. Yeah. Keep it forever. Uh, and wait, we'll go back up. Sorry, I'm. Is it? Mm-hmm. Wait. Mm-hmm. All right. Now I'm going to read this verbatim, and I don't know what it implies. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> I'm sixty percent black, forty percent all white. Is he referring to his own race? <laughs> no, I or think is he's he talking about the dial. The dial? Dials, I, would, yeah. I would say white. That's I what I was say, reading uh, that too. I was like, <laughs> how did we get to here? I, my favorite is the oh, Stormtrooper. The that. Planet Ocean Stormtrooper, which is black and white, is my favorite, followed by orange. And he likes yeah. cereal. Well, see, that's yeah. good. Thank yeah. you, Auburn Vans. I'll, th- I'll take the compliment. And Auburn, I'm an Omega guy. I got my vintage Yeah, he's got a nice Speedmaster going on right now. That's a good one. Thoughts on Pike's Peak? I did notice that. All right, thoughts as a spectator. Pike's Peak versus the Isle of Man TT. Mm. Well, I've never, I mean, Isle of Man TT is on my uh, bucket list to do. Uh, I was just at, uh, we were just at yeah. Pikes Peak watching the 935 go up. Epic experience. But um, unless you can climb up on the hill and, you know, it was COVID time, so it wasn't the audience. But I've been saying for a while, Pikes Peak is like going to Lollapalooza, Woodstock. There's fights, there's drunks, there's, I mean, it's awesome. It's like, tofo- <laughs> it's like Tofosi redneck vibe. Yeah, it's yeah. so good. <laughs> <laughs> it is really good. Uh, redneck but, aficionado. Yeah, but, Isle of Man TT is on the list, though, for yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure. I mean. Because you're, you're like in a cottage. Correct. And you come out of your cottage with your right. tea. Yeah. <laughs> there's a stone wall about yay high. Correct. Or and scotch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you the know, guys are off the ground with both wheels. Yeah. And, I mean, it's just like crazy. I mean. Just crazy yeah. town. I want to do that too. Like, yeah. Who doesn't? Yeah. Can we get a package going? I think they're equal. Yeah, Let's do cool. that. Yeah. Road Scholars package going. Road Scholars. I'll get down experience. On that. Yeah. I would do it. Bad decision weekend. <laughs> and a uh, question for Serio. Yeah. How lovely is the E34 M5? Ooh. Well, I mean, compared to the 88 car we just talked about, big bang for the buck. I yeah. mean, and why not? Yeah. If you can find one that's been maintained. That's Good all. looking car. Yeah. I mean, it's it's mm-hmm. perfectly fine. Unpopular opinion? I'll take a 540i touring with a six-speed. Mm. Mm. V8 suits the chassis better. Ooh, just polarized. Just, I'm not going to get into that. You get, you get in the weeds a little bit. I'll, I'll We're like that. quiet over here. Like, yeah. mm. That's that's what you like your spare ribs with or without the bone. Uh, I, mean, I just say fine. Tycon so. is. A, that's a good question right there. Wait, hang on. We're, we're, uh, we're, can you not jump ahead? Can oh, you? sorry. Kevin yeah. O'Grady, best sports yeah. car for bumpy New Jersey roads and bombing city streets for seventy five thousand. What sports cars have the best suspension? I'm going to throw it out there. C8 Corvette Z51. That's you, good. You know more if about If you're that, driving I, on bumpy roads, there's not much better for that price point than that car. Yeah. Really? Yeah. The, f- the Dude, if you want to talk about the best ride quality of any car I've ever driven, number one, Rolls-Royce Phantom. Yeah. Number two, McLaren what, what, 720 what and What generation mode. Phantom are you talking about? The, two, the, the, the two-door? Or the you talking about the Phantom Coupe or the Phantom the Four Door? Like a twenty fourteen oh, Coupe. Oh, I I still love those cars, and my wife will divorce me if I ever come home with one. <laughs> I mean, I, I think it is such. I mean, they were four and change, yeah. and now they're one fifty. Yeah, good value. Uh, yeah, huge, huge value. value. You drive underhand. Yeah. <laughs> But it's that McLaren 720 Comfort Mode and then C8 Corvette in Comfort Mode are the three most best riding cars I've ever driven. Interesting. What a what a Eclectic. complete yeah. yeah, I mean that's like having I'm going to eat a donut, I'm going to have a fish fillet, <laughs> no. and then I'm going to go have you know. Well, because ride steak. quality is achieved in different ways. Yes, yeah, it sure. is. Yeah, yeah. Rolls Royce, that's all they do. Yeah, McLaren has their crazy mm-hmm. suspension with all the articulation, yeah. and GM is just. Built in a place that has shitty roads. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but look, New England. Design, That's why I'm listening in intently because yeah. New Jersey is like New England. There's nothing worse than being in some cool city and driving shitty roads and an awesome car that 
it's a shitty experience because yeah. your, your kidneys are getting beat up. Oh, it's yeah. the worst. It's terrible. It's terrible. Uh, Unleak80. Uh, I'm looking to buy a car for myself for the next year. I'm 36 year old dad with two kids and nice. I'm a mechanic. Okay. Should I get a used Lexus ISF, a used Tesla Model S, or a used Honda Civic Type R? Ooh. Wow. Hmm. Mm. I would say I have to defer. I, I would say they, ISF. You know what those were. I didn't even Lexus know what he was ISF, talking about. Tesla yeah. Model S or a Honda Civic Type. I R. like the Lexus just because it's a little sexier. I mean, yeah. I, I love Hondas. I mean, well, we have a shop. All of the guys that work in the shop, we all have Project Hondas, which is kind of funny. You're speaking Civic Mandarin Type R right is now. A great and I know Latin. little car. Yeah, <laughs> great car. Yeah. But I would still but go the Lexus ISF. ISF is cool. It's yeah. got a cool factor to it. Yeah, I think. sounds amazing. It sounds amazing. Good. Sexy. Very. Yeah, I would go with that. I bet those will go up in the long term. Too, yeah. You know, they weren't appreciated as much because the M3 kind of destroyed them on track. But yeah. correct, yeah, yeah. Uh, Brett Stevens has. Uh, uh, I'm going to kick your question, Brett. I love you, but I'm going to kick your question. He wants to know opinions on the new Volvo S60 T8. Uh, I have a whole video on that. Yeah. I've, and on, on, go over to the YouTube channel. I did a Watch whole review. It. You got 18 minutes of Volvo uh, T8 Polestar. <laughs> you don't want to rehash that now? Get the, well, get, get the Kleenexes I'm out, not, Brett. Not, You're I'm about not, to go to town. I'm not appreciative of the question, but I, what are the opinions? I have lots of them. Yeah. Yeah. Drop not, your pants, uh, get the Kleenexes out. I, <laughs> this I, one is more appropriate. Pr, uh, Prashanth Panicker. Tycon versus 911, same money, driving experience alone, which is more special? Ooh. Oh. I think more special is probably the wrong word. Yeah, more it's different. Special. I mean, that that's apples and bananas, too. I mean, Tycon, uh, the Tycon, I've only been in one so mm -hmm. far. It's amazing. Uh, it goes as quickly as you'd ever want anything to go. I can't wrap my head around it yet. I, I just I think it's very good. I yeah, think it goes. Very, I think it goes good. back to what you said about uh, the Tesla and um, yeah, the experience of it. It's kind of this uh, pneumatic void of experience. I mean, that's amazing. The Taycan's amazing. I've driven two of them. Yeah. They're really great. They do everything well. They drive. They're fast. It's lightning. No, but it's just no it's, it's tactile it's tonic. experience. It's I no like the space noises. I like Angry Jetson's noises. Yes, I do too. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but like, I feel like the 911, if the, if the person's going to yeah. actually use it, the 911's going to be a more rewarding experience. Sure it is. Yeah. It's going to be more analog no matter <coughs> yeah. what happens. Yeah. And I think that's... I haven't graduated from analog yet. Yeah. I still like it. I thought we were doing a drinking game every time, time we said analog, we're going <laughs> to pound a shot. Tycon is <laughs> definitely time, the for Porsche sure. of EVs. Sure. And, yes. and the steering is right there. The handling is there. Yeah. Um, all, I've driven 4S, Turbo, and Turbo S. Yeah. They're all, the, I mean. They're all. The turbos taller. with all the turbos? Yes. Yeah, yeah. the Turbo S is bananas. Yeah, it is yeah. It, But if you gave me the 4S and mm -hmm. just told me it was the Turbo S, yep. I would not be disappointed with the experience. And they're you know? sexy. I mean, they're great looking. Great looking, great -looking, car. Car. Yeah, -looking, great -looking car. sedan. Yeah. I don't know about the Forgiatos. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Mm -hmm. The Tron wheels the Tron really look like four Giottos from 06. <laughs> Why are you ruining it? Just ruined it for me. Giottos. I can't help, right? I can't. My Serio can't unsee it now. I can't, un I can't unsee it. <laughs> my I just eye? seared his eyes. I just I realized what you just said. And my, I got the Tron slide yeah, in my brain. The painted lip. Oh, you know what? I like them. They haven't them. done a painted um, lip since uh, 06. <laughs> guys. <laughs> You're being oh, mean. that's that's, that's not right. Cruel. You can't unsee it. I don't yeah. like it. Yeah. Do you even yep. Tron, bro? Do, do you, bro? Do Tron. you even? I we mean, saw a Vulcan yesterday with the world's biggest splitter. An oh Aston Vulcan? Yes. Yeah. Really? Uh, yeah. yeah. And it was so good. Street car or race car? No, no there isn't a street, car. A street car. No, but there's a guy who got a plate yeah. on one all shady, so yeah. you never know. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. Montana trailer yeah. registration. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Matt Farah program. Worst splitter in the entire world. It was longer than this table. It was like, and people would step on it if the car was out on the street. It was so good. And that you was like carbon Zoku. fiber everywhere. It was so sophisticated and trashy. At the same Remember time, when Aston it? Martin tried to do elegant for 50 years and they just abandoned they all said, of it? They said, screw it. Yeah. All We're, their press cars are like fucking orange yeah. now. It's very Acid funny. Green. That's why I'm not a dealer anymore, Matt. It's, <laughs> it's you know, I, I graduated. I, Aston is a brand, oh Jesus Christ, oh that I've wanted to like. You, I, it's like I want to root for them every single time, right. and I like my Vanquish for what it is. Yeah. Um, but your Vanquish is OG. It's old school. Yeah. It it's really has aged well. well it has it Do you remember yeah. when people used to say, "Oh, Aston, they have great interiors." <laughs> <laughs> my, my my Audi Recaro seats, yeah, exactly. my Ford uh, Volvo switch gear <laughs> tells you that. Talk Jaguar about, radio. Talk about this. I get, I'll give you that a was great, good. A great really good. Vanquish customer, new, brand new customer, the <laughs> 05 Vanquish that I just sold. 
Uh, Grace is, I refer to her as Gracie Pants, and if she's listening to this, she's going to die. But Grace is 25, 26 years old. brought a Vanquish S from you. Brought a Vanquish S from me. It was her dream car. How interesting. And she took it. Uh, second day she had it, she took it to a Georgetown reunion. How baller is that? Gee. So she's she's doing the old, Extremely look what I've been G. doing since yeah. I graduated three years ago. <laughs> yeah. And I've made some money, and That's I'm smart, flex. and, you know, it's a big flex. Uh-huh. But think about... That she appreciates that car from the Bond days of when that was a totally. Bond car, yeah. and I get that. I mean, and it's the last hand-built, great, you know, wonderful. Yeah, it really has aged well. And I parked sexy. it. I parked it. I had the DBS uh, press car out here, oh. which was orange, yeah. and I mm-hmm. parked it in here next to the Vanquish. And it's like, holy shit, the Vanquish <laughs> is pretty, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> they've really, they've really gone off the deep end. And actually, I think from a the dynamics perspective, and and I re- I thought the Roadster that I just drove the Vantage. Roadster was quite good, but but AMG's GTC and GTR, mm-hmm. the Lexus LC500, mm-hmm. um, have both out outdone them. Yeah, you know, I think I think they've done a really nice job in both of those cars, and the AMG GTR especially is fabulous. So, yeah. who becomes nice. redundant first, Aston or McLaren? <sighs> Ooh, I really good. feel like Aston because y- there will always be more YouTubers. <laughs> <laughs> to it, buy, to and no one, and, and no one's talking about Mercedes Benz and the whole, you know, stepping yeah. up to the pump yeah. with yeah. Aston. I, you know, Mac, uh, McLaren manages to shoot themselves in the foot <laughs> by releasing a new model every six months. Yeah. It's too fast, but but they're teetering. I mean, monetarily, well, they're always, yeah, yeah. They're always, that's what yeah. I'm talking about. I Somebody, mean, Habibi, yeah, Habibi. <laughs> Don't worry, Habibi. <laughs> we save them. They build a special edition, bro. Bro, we all get special editions. Yes. You get one of one, one of one, one of one, one of one. All we have to do, we buy company. That's okay. it. Yeah. We just buy company. I got then fancy they work stitching. I have stitching that your car doesn't have. Gold wheels for everybody. Bro, M- yeah. MSO, what do you initial? We change MSO. Yes. <laughs> it's just SSO. It's SSO now. It's Steve City oh Operations. Steve we just buy. It's okay. Oh my God, that, that is so good. <laughs> that is where, so where did the What's not, crazy the, the is that ha- that conversation happened a few years ago. <gasps> yeah, That's that not the current it, conversation. It, 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 I know. Like, I was like, it's that, like the Nigerian. I, just did, I didn't do future. I just did history. You did history. <laughs> I was like, the Nigerian <laughs> prince is saving Spiker. That was another one of those. What oh, do you mean that you was so Nigerian good. Nigerian money oh. saving Spiker. Never Spiker. And everybody was like, oh, this is amazing. I was like, it's the tackiest thing I've ever seen. You ever seen drive one though? No. I was a dealer. Shockingly good. Shockingly good. Really? Yeah. Yes, very good. Really, really nice N- to drive. Nice chassis, Audi engine. What's Audi not engine, the light? Yeah, the outside of it, which looks like somebody oh, ra- you know raped a grouper again and <laughs> gilded it up while they were doing it. I mean, a it looks shark like, had its uh, way with a grouper. It, it looks like one so. of the one of the attack spaceships from Independence Day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't That's I see good. this on an asteroid game in the 80s? But would you have guessed they're flipping for 350 no. right now? No, I, I just mean, wrote about shit. that sports car market. I ju- Unbelievable, you know, right? You add more fins and gills mm-hmm. and vents, and it will go faster. Yeah, I yeah. don't get it. Vents I, that look yeah. like propellers. Very, yeah. yeah, I did like that original the Re- propeller the Riva wheel. steering wheel. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That things. was actually good. That's amazing. And the, la- the exposed linkage was yeah, gorgeous. Was I mean, those they, there were some details in that thing that were very, very cool. Yeah. But, they, but they used every single automotive detail. Detail yeah. to the nines. <laughs> true. All of if them. we're going to put switches in them, like, there's we're, we're, we're going to, you know. There's a lot the happening. There's a lot. Happening. Happening. They used, yeah, they, they really Let's have every end, cliche, they, right? They could have engine turned the, the leather if they wanted to. I mean, <laughs> we're going to throw the whole kitchen sink at this design, guys. <laughs> Oh yeah! Oh my God! Subtle. This yes. is it's like a, a health food. It's like there's one full airplane's worth of parts in every car. <laughs> that's the, that, that's, there's two pounds of spinach that's in like every ask, smoothie. That's yeah. like asking Absolutely. somebody, you know, Kim Kardashian's ass is small, and so is a, smi- a spiker it's, is subtle. It's yeah. really just so much. It's so happy. Well, in the but, cool. VF Engineering put a fucking roots blower on one of those ones. It made 525 horsepower Yeah, the interior fire. is pretty damn badass. Look no, that's awesome. that's, that's, uh, that interior yeah, is good. Cool. Yeah. It's I, very good. That was I good like it. You know, you know what is great? That how they turn, look at wrong. the door handles. Yeah. They're just Audi door handles yeah. turned upside down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so exotic. Guys, they won't, they won't know. Guys, we turn they upside won't. down. Yeah. They don't know. They are distracted by Papella. I, I would like to drive that, that like at the Amalfi Coast, like yeah. have your white linen outfit on. And but just, yeah. you don't like, look you know. more Russian to me, no. but that's okay. Dude, I, now that I look Kamensky. at it too, Kamensky. the uh, the blinkers, the, the blinker <laughs> switches are like, they're really like yeah. a rifle, like click, click, oh, they click. Are, yeah. yeah. 
I like to get out of that car with my Oakley blades on. You know, <laughs> you need to go top. full linen. It's it's a full, same shirt as the GT500. Full, full linen yeah. outfit <laughs> for sure. Full linen for it's sure. It's full tubs out of Miami Vice linen. For it sure. really yeah. is. Yeah, but yeah. the gauges are attractive. I mean, there's so and much going on. And then you've got on. the switch. The what do all the switches switch do? Like <laughs> everything. Probably there's nothing. one for everything. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, all control. All of them. There's like a there's a windshield wiper one. There's the. Uh, like, Did you actually? It doesn't bother you that the e-brake is on the wrong side. You know. That's so you reach over to <laughs> you reach over to your lady friend and be like, "Hey, sorry, so, I'm not trying things, to be forward." You know, things that I failed miserably at: selling these, <laughs> yeah. selling Celine S sevens. Oh that didn't my work god, out. those were really shit boxes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> and, and, and they won so many races, though. Uh, they did. Yeah, they yeah, destroyed. Race cars. Yeah, destroyed. race cars are not street cars. I, I know. Race cars, they and, destroyed it. I mean, they and, were. Being in a Bugatti dealer for the EB110, oh. launching the car, taking four orders for it, and then watching the company go into receivership. Oh, no. I mean, that was, you know, so I started. They don't even it. give you a, do they give you a Veyron uh, license <laughs> no, after no, that? No, it no? wasn't owned by Lotus oh, anymore, fuck. so. How many Roma, other bad decisions did you make? Roma, I mean, oh, like, bunch, <laughs> several. Vespa, you said, you said Vespa. I was a Vespa dealer as well Was that for a, a bad decision too? Oh, that was, nobody wanted them in Boston. It wasn't oh, the, Boston, the yeah. weather for Vespas. <laughs> yeah, Vespa hey, this was 4,500 bucks. When was that, yeah. was that during that whole craze, like in the 2000s, when uh, that reemergence of scooters, and everyone's like, I'm going to buy my, that's a good idea, I'm going to buy my kid a scooter. Boston, though it's like yeah. cobblestone like, no, streets, cobblestone. the Have toughest city in the country. <laughs> like, what is this? Yeah. Fucking, <laughs> fucking Italian motorcycle exactly. with one speed. Exactly. Yeah, fuck I'll tell you. Exactly. I'll tell you exactly. I can great. think of what word they use yeah. to call you when you're riding. I'm not that in yeah, exactly. It's like this, Mr. Mackey this, from no. South Park. That's why everybody's scooting around on scooters. <laughs> scooters. <laughs> mm, drugs are bad with scooting. Dude, you just I I mean, look, I live in Venice fucking Beach, and I am pretty secure in myself, and I have a Vespa 300, the big fast yeah. one. And I made a video with it last week. Like, here's my Vespa 300. This is like the whole video. It wrote wrote it to work. Really? And you should read the comments. I mean, yeah. the I, the fragile, the <gasps> fragility oh, no of way. the masculinity of my audience. Really? <laughs> oh my god. Then you're like, you don't want to be seen riding that by fucking the who? worst. The worst. Who don't I want to see the, me riding this? Wearing a helmet to where the people don't <laughs> That's know. That's the most fun you can have. I mean, the, they're a blast. The they're worst blast. thing when I was a Vespa dealer. Who's insecure dealer? about that? That's yeah. crazy. Our, our audience is like 95 percent 24 to 34. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, it was like, bro, do you even lift? Exactly. Yeah. The greatest, the greatest line, uh, I think it was from Pat, the guy that's still working for me. He said, riding a Vespa is like getting caught fucking a fat chick. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, I've heard that before. That's bullshit. I know. That's I know. bullshit. I, listen, way, I'd I'd be, had one. I'd be I'd proud to do one. either thing. I had a black one. one of those activities uh, is a win. <laughs> Hey, that rabbit. No offense against <laughs> fat chicks. So when? Before you start that, getting when, letters. You know that golf rabbit that just but, sold on Bring a Trailer for $70,000? I would drive the shit out of that. Oh, I, yeah. I just heard friend, about that this morning. And a bunch was of my it? friends would say, yeah. oh, that's a like girly no car. On it? Yeah, yeah. I, I would drive. I mean, that's killer. I had a You're Wolfsburg driving edition. up the value, though. Yeah. Driving down the... Yeah, <laughs> driving the value right out of yeah. it. I'm Everybody sorry. said, how's your cabrio gay? Instead of cabrio gay. So that's funny. Yeah, I had that That would have been the joke in the 80s. Yeah, yeah. Cabrio gay. Cabrio gay, yeah. That's so What do you rhyme it with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So wait, the Vespa story, against the truth so I can tell this story because the statute of limitation oh is over. Oh, they were getting stuck after 9-11 uh, with just an inventory full of bikes at the port uh -huh. and nobody was buying them. So the, the head of Vespa just said, well, hmm. what's the problem with having a year or two year old uh, Vespa? He said, why don't we just restamp the VIN? This sounds exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly in so line. It was like, what do you? Well, first of all, it's against the law, and secondly, so we're supposed to we're supposed to sell these things that have been sitting around for twenty four months as brand new because you're going to change the VIN number. Whoa! Yes, yeah, bad yes, idea. We are. Did they do it? They did it, didn't they? Of I don't. I, you know, I think we gave it up slightly <laughs> after nine eleven because that's when everything was like, yeah, we don't need to be doing this anymore. You know who did that is Delorean. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Delorean revinned all their eight unsold eighty two. <laughs> as 83s because yep. my DeLorean was an 83 that was actually built as an 82. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Seriously, it's fucking crazy. The mixing and matching of parts of the DeLorean. So my car was an original. I, I bought a 2,000 mile car. It was an original car. 1983 DeLorean that absolutely inexplicably had the radio from the 1981 models in it mm. and the air conditioning controls oh, from the first half of 82 <laughs> but the rest of the car was late 82 83 <laughs> 
But this was all factory installed. It just made no sense. At all. Factory. Yeah. Factory original. Yeah. It made no sense. Hand built by hand. Uh, let's blast right. through these. We're going to wrap okay. this show up. Ramon has always wanted an E92 M3, but it's an older car. How does it compare to a base M2? The M2 is a little smaller. Yeah. You don't get a V8, and that V8 is very, very good. Yep. And go with the older car, Ramon. Go with, go with the older car. Make sure it's had that, uh, what is it, rod bearings? Is that what they have? Mm. Yep. The rod bearing thing. Get That's the rod bearing thing. Intel on the lifted 911 prototype on the web this week. We talked about this on the last show. You might not have heard it yet, but none. You guys, you see that thing? No. It looks like, <laughs> looks like a 992.2 camo prototype with a one to two inch lift and a little bit of an over fender. This isn't the thing with the big wing that's No, no, that's around. a GT3. Okay. It's this. It mm. looks like a slightly, it's not like it's safari'd. It's almost like it's yeah. all roaded. I don't know about that. Well, because they're not going to go full safari to sell, but they, they will probably, go all road. They probably could go all they road. They could go all road. It wouldn't shock me if they pushed the C4 mm -hmm. in that direction. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I don't think it's a safari. I think someone's just fucking around at the Nurburgring. I'd have to own one and it'd be white camo. Like, you know, just totally. <laughs> I, I don't know. Total cheese I, bet, I bet they do. I bet they, I bet uh, overlanding is about to jump the shark or safari cars. Yeah. You think so? Yeah. It's huh. just, I don't know. Why else would they test something that looks like it's been lifted two, three inches? Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. Could that's, be. It could be interesting. That's a strange one. Yeah, really weird, right? Yeah, it's strange. With wooden wheel arches. It could also be someone's fucking yeah. idea of a joke. It could right. be. It could be. Uh, Just to get people trolling. like us talking about it, like, hmm. This yeah. Is, yeah. It's on the interwebs. Yeah. Must, be real. must be real. But I wouldn't be surprised to see someone ruin a brand by going all Speed road. Speed yeah. record. Uh, Pirhana says, what cars have you driven that are underratedly amazing to drive? Uh, his example is a Mazda MX-6 with a four-cylinder. Too bad it's the four-cylinder. The Mazda MX-6 with the V6 is the KLZ EV6, yeah. which is the two-liter that revs to 8,500. That's the jam, that engine. Uh, What's this? Underrated cars. Maybe they're cheap. That are very fun to drive. I mean, Miatas are awesome. I mean, oh, yeah. still Miatas, yeah. Civic hatchbacks, Civic hatchbacks, 90 Civic Civic hatchbacks. Oh, man, they're killer. Perfect suspension geometry. Listen, the, the yeah. VW GTI we talked about earlier, with or without the Callaway Turbo one, yeah. it's still a blast. Cabrio, yeah. 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 Well, no, the, the coupe, the regular. Oh, the, yeah, the regular, not the Cabrio. <laughs> the the, the ca Cabrio, turbo, the Cabrio. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what flex? There's a company in uh, Canada called HPA. Uh -huh. You know them, tuner company. Yeah. Uh, very Canadian. Yeah. Very, very Canadian. understated. They pretty much exclusively build sleepers. If you're mm -hmm. like, I want to build this car, 800 horsepower, big wings. No on, one's ever heard like, of it. They're like, no, no, no wings, sir. It must look stock. It must look <laughs> so stock. they, I, I drove like a that. 750 horsepower Golf R. They built uh -huh. that runs like a nine second quarter mile. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Uh, crazy town, yeah. right? But they built a an EOS. Mm -hmm. You know the EOS, yeah. the hard top, retractable sure. hard top yeah. thing? 650 horsepower. The car that twin nobody turbo bought. turbo VR6 and an RS3's dual clutch gearbox. All wheel drive. That's I, killer. In a fucking EOS. Yeah, and the EOS? This thing was mobbing. That's <laughs> killer. It was I out of control. Laying it, it down. so fast. Well, can you and imagine you, pulling uh, up to an EOS at the light and it just lays it down on you and you walks It's a turbo VR6. So you start it up and it just it was just quiet as mm. stock sounding exhaust. You'd never know. All right. I think that, it was What you just mentioned, though, a Golf R, one of our friends in England, uh, James Turner, yeah. like we've I've gone over there a bunch and we always ride around in his golf looking at cars. And I'm impressed by that thing. I mean, of course, it's great, but it's yeah. a great car. For a daily, it's a badass Every car. time I drive a GTI, or yeah. a golf R, I yeah. go, well, this is enough. Yeah, this, this is enough. Fine. This yeah, would yeah, be yeah. fine. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Brabus put a 928 engine in a Volkswagen <laughs> Cabriolet once. <laughs> what? And it, you had to under, you had to a look at it and go, why is that car wider than an average Volkswagen? It was, was it wider transverse by, or longitudinal? I can't yeah. answer that. But it, Imagine I, I, it was I transverse. Remember, they left it, it front-wheel drive. <laughs> 19, yeah, was it was 1984, <laughs> and I remember seeing it, and it was like, oh Has anyone here driven a Brabus word. smart car? Yeah. What was that like? I've it's a smart car. There's I've no had, difference. No? It's got wheels on it. Yeah, no. No. Smart cars are the worst. Yeah, no. They're horrible. <laughs> Everything about them is terrible. <laughs> what happened and Brabus has some hits. Oh, there it is. Look at that. It's oh. eight, eight oh, cylinder, is. 240 yeah. horsepower. So I we, saw that car in Monaco. It is really wide. And it was, <laughs> I remember Whoa. staring at it in front of the casino in Formula like, One week, different. and I'm like, what's what different? What is wrong with it? And I look, and like, the, somebody How? came up to it and said it was a 928 yeah. engine stuck okay, inside so of it. So is it... It's uh, powered by the engine. But I saw a cabriolet. But, That's a coupe. But it doesn't... Uh, oh, tra uh, a chassis and drivetrain. Oh, okay, yeah. so they stretched the body and they plopped it on a 928 uh, skateboard, as there you, you go. Yep, there you go. 
That's fucking Super badass. badass. Super badass. Rabbit. That was there. We go. There's the oh, game. Yeah. Mario. Wow. That's it. Look how ungainly that is. <laughs> My God. Oh, wow. man, the wheels and tires are terrible. Jeez. And then they did. Remember they did the uh, when the Mark V was out. They put the Volkswagen or the Bentley W12 yep. in the middle of one. Yeah. It didn't. And oh, I remember that. It was like undrivable. Yeah. I could yeah. get on board with that bottom right image. That's well, pretty hot. Leonard. <laughs> oh, where it's got the the Ooh. Plymouth Allegiant I, I, grill on the it. iRock edition. <laughs> that is the iRock. I love that. That is that. Legit a K car front end, like yeah, a, that's like a Chrysler K car. Looks like a Cobra Mustang like, front end. Like. Terrible. Oh, Leno God. still has Chuck Beck's Showgun. Yes, right. he does. Yeah, so that's something. Sure. I've I seen mean, him drive it to Cars and Coffee yeah. and stuff. It's got yeah. nitrous on it too. That's a crazy <laughs> car. First of all, the Showgun was a, a it. Ford Festiva, yeah, Festiva. Right. with an SHO engine with in the back. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like I can make an R5. I yeah, can, uh, Renault does it, but yeah. I can do this in Upland. It's no big deal. Yeah, we can yeah, just, yeah, just do, do it. Why we'll just do it in the valley? <laughs> and it's well, okay. And we just it? saw a 904, one of Beck's 904s, one of the kits, electric. Some guy we saw whips. Guy was like, "Were you interested in buying this?" And was like, "We're we're dealing with another car with him." I'm like, "No, that's not really my wheelhouse, but it must go like hell." So, um, where's I, Fonsi? What's I would have loved to have been in that marketing What's meeting it? where they were like, "Shogun." Guys, I have an idea. <laughs> uh, hear me out. Hear me out. We had an idea for Don't a overreact. sketch comedy show called The Boardroom, uh, where we would work backwards from cars. the worst cars ever made <laughs> yeah. and reenact the boardroom decisions yeah. that led to them being uh, greenlit. Yeah. I think that's a good, good Okay, idea. it's called an Aztec. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, there's going to be a tent that comes out of the back. My the Aztec, light. by the way, predicted the future, in case you're wondering. The yeah. Aztec is right at home in 2020 cross. Mm. Mercedes sells four different Aztecs right now. Wait, didn't the, <laughs> and is, like the Aztec calendar also sort of predicted the future <laughs> yeah. the ends? Lamborghini's got an Aztec, like every Every company makes an Aztec. It was the, the it was the apocalypse. It was definitely the apocalypse calendar. Yeah. Yeah. We just didn't read it right. We we're like, is this about uh, you know the year two thousand and everything? No, 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 this is about a terrible car. Yeah. It's going to change everything in the far future. Yeah. <laughs> Well, in, in a galaxy far, far you away. You need what you need is an Overfinch Range Rover. I've yeah. seen them; they're cool. Ooh, they are. And cool. you need like they're an cool. early gen Mac Daddy nineteen kind of eighty nine. The eighties Range Rovers. Oh come personally. on! I really? Just, it's, yeah, I find Wait. them f- offensive. Well, because of the you people know I who have drove one, them so when that's they were okay. new. Uh, no, because when I where I, I grew, drove one when it was where new. I grew up, the people <laughs> driving them when they were new were pretentious real fucking balls. wankers. Well, yeah, yeah. Just, I came yeah. out to San Diego to get mine because I wanted a <laughs> cloth interior one when I was still a photographer and I wanted to throw my shit in it. And I had to go. I had to buy a Hunter version, which was the down market version. Uh, Use it for five years. Is that below 000. the county? County yeah, was yeah, up. Yeah, county market? wasn't. Yeah. County wasn't there yet. Okay, that's so pedestrian. Were you like this is so pedestrian? Like, and so we used one last week. Uh, his uh, camera guys opened the tailgate and hung out the back of it yeah. on taking pictures. It's good for that. And yeah. the guy driving it was like, how do you drive this? This is a 160 horsepower two-ton vehicle. It doesn't it doesn't go. I mean, I'll give you and that they lo- oh, they ha- they look great. Yeah. So over, uh, over, uh, over show over me that fish. that right there. Six Put by it, six. Yes. Oh. Oh, oh Jesus! Whoa. The Harris Harris edition. Harris edition. Oh, no, the Harris, over the terrible. over Finch went around the Harris Silverstone edition looks like a Jeep Renegade faster treatment. than a 944 at the time. I want this. So that, doesn't, that says more about the 944 than it does the Range Rover. <laughs> if I'm honest, I like that six wheel. I like that six wheel Vermont. Six uh, by sixes are good until you drive them. Yeah. Yeah. John Hennessy built turned a Chevy truck into a six by six to try and compete with the Mercedes truck. Oh, yeah. And I drove it. And it was... Dog. <laughs> have you driven the Benz grand. thing? It's not, dri- it's not you, good. Have you not driven good. the Benz thing? That massive... No, I've never, I have not driven a 6x6. Six six. I'd love to, but I never have. Oh. And is anybody out here driving the, the blown uh, G-Wagons? Oh, the, the, those, there we the, go. The specially large... Oh, the 4x2? Yeah, the 4-squared. The 4-squared, yeah. Four yeah. A lot of people have those. see those on the road? People... And I guess they must have all bought the press cars out here, because everyone who's got one here has got one in fucking green. Like neon oh, green. God, there you go. Do you have an influence, bro? <laughs> the, I don't. Those are the the, Do you even the have six buys are <laughs> properly dumb. I understand yeah. why somebody would want one, but right. they're dumb. Yeah. Well, I've seen yeah. the the gold finished one in London yeah, in a yeah, parking the garage, <laughs> and it's like that, the nuclear yeah. waste oh, colored one. Geez. There's at least three or four of the nuclear waste colored ones really? running around LA. Yeah, yeah. Already? That was the launch color, yeah. and they're all fucking. Can't here. drive into a parking garage with it because they're so tall. Yeah, I mean, the portal true. axles are cool, but I don't get it around here. Yeah. 
My I homie James Chen has one, and he's a, he's he's a good good dude. James, you know James Chen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the man. I don't got know, nice, but I know who he he's, is. He's hilarious. Yeah. He's got a nice nice collection, and he that's his daily. Is one of these that's things. great. But he's a him. fucking like lunatic, so ass ball. To be driving around in that every day. This guy's I mean. a fucking. He's out of his mind. He's yeah. great. He's exactly the kind of person who should drive that. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. perfect yeah. for his person. Um, last question. Okay. And then let's okay. fucking wrap this up. Wrap it up. Where do you have to go? I have to run a shop today. Listen, we got customers coming. Thing going on. I know today. you We're hang out. Here. I just got I got customers and work to do. Uh, mm. Worst near future un- near future car unnecessary feature over car. All right. So what are you, complain about the cars today? Where have they overthought this system? I mean, the 911 new door handles drive me nuts. Like, I need you to lift the handle for me. Like, the where yeah, the where the door handle presents itself it's to like, you. Hello, may I have your hand? That's it's a point oh one percent aerodynamic improvement. <laughs> yeah, my <laughs> my that. wife's uh, awful Velar, which is the worst vehicle Ooh. Range Rover's ever made. The door handle that comes out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Velar. It's just what the, else? Why don't you like that that car? Is transmission it? sucks. Oh. Um, engine management is terrible. What engine is it? It's the well, whatever six cylinder, uh, whatever the, yeah, the regular one, the regular one, and the screen constantly goes down, which you lose everything in the car. Check engine light has been on for so long. The dealer actually said to her, "Well, that happens." <laughs> they're, they're not even willing. To, they're, they're not even willing to fix it anymore. They're not even willing to entertain the fact that they can knock it out. So. And I've been, we've been driving Rovers since, well, since 88 from the truck you hate. Um, and that's why we said can't do Rovers anymore. They're decontented. The, the big trucks are like driving a pillow down the road. And that's why we I went like. G-Wagon. I like that's pillow. why we like a pillow. <laughs> I like a pillow. Are they made in Minnesota? The new, the new G-Wagon gets very close to the ride quality of the current gen Rover. Uh-huh. It, the, the, in, they went to an independent front suspension. Right. Well, I've right. driven the it's new a, one twice. It's fucking night and day. It's, yeah. it's night and day. Yeah. It's a totally different. It's the first G wagon I've ever driven that I liked. That I actually yeah. was like, oh, I enjoy driving this. They're this too harsh good. otherwise. But this yeah. one has a, a really big sticker price on it. Yes. It's one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Right. Holy moly! Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what they are. Non AMG. Right. Whoa. That's what it is. <laughs> what is yeah. the AMG? What do you do? What do you spend for AMG? AMG is like one hundred ninety grand. Holy. Yeah. And Holy. like, dude, in LA. I don't see 550s. I they're only all 63s. see AMGs. They're yeah. all 63s. I know we were laughing because we were having like the count yesterday. We're like, that's number 30. We've yeah. seen like, yeah. They're all 63s, and the extra 100 horsepower gets you fucking dick in, yeah. in the yeah, city. Yeah, donut. Well, it's, you're it's driving quick. a brick. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. good. It's they've The reprogramming of the gearbox, the steering uh-huh. is night and day in this car. It's beautiful. I think yeah. in general, just modern cars, like I get into the new Porsche. I've, I've spent some miles in the new Porsche, and the, I just can't get on board, and it's a product of my generation. But the whole screens, all the nano. Was, yeah, it's just too much, and I, I'm obviously an analog guy, but that screen that goes across the whole thing, it just ruins and the whole. Tycon, you mean? No, yeah. just the new 911. Oh, they have an analog tack. Yeah, but <laughs> that's over there. Yeah, analog tack. But then you have that whole like, it reminds me of the screen in the old Panas, like or the new Panas. I, I do say. worry about screens. Yeah, what screens. you know? It does it's, does the screens eliminate right. you know kind of classic cars? Like, what are we going to do with these things in twenty years? Is it going to be you're not going to be able to, be able to fix or, them? You yeah. can't fix a lot of the stuff from the early nineties. I mean, you get into those boards, and if unless you've got some geek that's sitting the there, the Lagonda like, computer. Oh my God! <laughs> oh. <laughs> now there's I, a I, car I, that really delivers. Oh. It's like a porn star car for the rich. That's oh. my ultimate fantasy pro touring build is oh. where I pretty much take a, a Hellcat idea. skateboard <gasps> and put a Lagonda that would be amazing. on it. Pretty much. Uh, oh, you know my, who did? Evil Knievel did something yeah, like that. it's here. The car's yeah. here. Um, Galpin. Yeah, Galpin Bo has owns it. it. It's, yeah. got a, it's got oh, a fucking wow. Ford 427 <laughs> in it. And, and it almost is there except because Evil Knievel uh-huh. it has side pipes, like of Cobra course. side pipes. Of course. So it's, it's I want to ride in the back of that and drink champs, you know, just drink Bo's champs. Bo's driven it. Bo's fucking driven that thing around. Bo's a howl. He's a funny guy. I've known him for years. I know his dad. And we, I had a meeting, a seven meeting with his dad. We both became Celine dealers on the same day. <laughs> this is me and Mr. Barker. Did you guys have five each other? <laughs> this is a great decision. Dude, back and later in the day. you guys went to unemployment line together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember it's going to sell like hotcakes. Back in 06 <laughs> at Gotham Dream Cars, the rental company I worked at in New York, we had one of the You were at Gotham? Cars. You were at Gotham? Mm-hmm. I was like their fourth employee. Didn't know this. That wow. was bef- yeah, before I made videos, any of that mm-hmm. stuff, I, I, I worked at Gotham Dream Cars for That's two years. That's cool. 
And That's then I riot. left, and me and Larry Casilla yeah. opened a car wash together. He now does the ammo car care yeah, products. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I left Gotham, me and him <laughs> opened a shop together. Yeah, <laughs> I, t- you, I did were, two years at Gotham. Who, we had a Selene S7 as a rental car. Who was the guy? Twenty-one ninety-nine a day. Who was the? It's a deal, smoking it was deal. Such a piece of shit. <laughs> it was such a piece of shit. That's why I know. I've fucking <laughs> driven it. It's terrible. Yeah. What was the what was uh, cool. was it Ultra Smith on really. the West Side that used to do all the stereo radar stuff? That was the uh, name of the place. Ultra Smith. That sounds right. By yeah. by the Javits. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. that's back in the day where you we're going to only put forty pounds of wire in your car with these speakers and amps. <laughs> you know, man, imagine like I oh where were, I just had this conversation. It was a great metaphor. It was I had a metaphor for something where it was like mm-hmm. we're at a point now where car companies oh because we were talking about mm-hmm. factory tuner cars like the GT five hundred yep. and the ZR one are kind of a eliminating the yeah. need to do your own, you know, to take yeah. it to an aftermarket shop and do your sure. tuning, right? Yeah. And it's sort of like when car manufacturers decide, like, hey, let's not put radios in the car that are this size <laughs> anymore. <laughs> like, let's just make it, like, that size. And now no one can change the fucking radio, you know? Yeah. We'll sell them a good radio, yeah. but we'll make it so you just can't change it. So, B&O yeah. o came on board. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, your car, did your car have the Lynn stereo? I never thought about that. In you have the big the Vanquish? Vanquish has a... The Lynn Lin system. Bows. No, the, the Vanquish bow. has the bows. Um, yeah, I don't have the. It's a, It's fine, but it's nothing. Yeah. My Lamborghini has the Alpine CD player yeah. that was nine thousand oh, dollars in nineteen eighty seven. I love. I love that stuff. <laughs> but you know, that's the charm of an eighties and nineties yeah. car is like seeing what they got. Did he get an Alpine? Did yeah. he do a Bell Punk? What did he do? Yeah. Like what was this? that deck is either like seventeen dollars yeah. on Craigslist yeah. <laughs> or ten G's when attached to a Countach. <laughs> or was he like? Did he go the cheap man? Did he get a Claritin? <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> yeah. What is the price? That Zach is that? That's the, so that's a twenty thousand dollars stereo option today, mm. which Inflation actually it's got. <laughs> Good, because if you get the best, what's the best car stereo you've heard ever? Can you oh. recall? Uh, I'll tell you the the B and O system in the shooting brake in the Aston yeah, shooting brake is that's pretty much up. off the charts. And wh- the amazing thing about that car is you can crank it to where it's deafening inside. Mm-hmm. And you can't hear any of it outside the car. That's good. Which is really which is really cool. That I think not because it's mine. I think that's the best thing I've heard. Some of the bomb. Uh, the Baumeister stuff is Burmeister, Burmeister yeah. rather. Um, it's it, the earlier stuff seemed to be better, um, but the, I think the stock Meridian in the Range Rover autobiography is, is off the chain. Is seventeen speakers? I think it's 19, 19, 19, nineteen speakers. speakers. Yeah. yeah, it's awesome. That's good. Do you know back in the day I had an a big H1 box, Hummer too. with the Monsoon in it that was oh, really the surprising. Monsoon? The Monsoon was surprisingly good. Which H one? I had a two thousand and one H one wagon. That was my daily driver. The mm-hmm. four door wagon. Because uh-huh. <laughs> I was an idiot. <laughs> Do you know the. Uh, Would you like to daily a school bus, but you just don't like yellow? <laughs> and you don't, and you can't touch the person sitting next to you what across a stupid from stupid fucking oh truck. <laughs> oh, I had a couple the of those worst. trade the over worst. the years. The pickup truck was dumb. That's the worst. Yeah, because you couldn't even move the seat far back. Right. As it is, it was like a Spirit Airlines coach seat in that <laughs> Spirit <fucking> Airlines. <laughs> horrible. Uh, let's wrap this shit up. Roadscholars.com. Yep. yep. R O A D scholars dot com. Yep. And your Instagram is Porsche Malone. Porsche like, Malone. Like po- yep. like Post Malone, but with Porsche. And Under- of course, Sirio, thank you for finding me my new Ferrari. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, I'm Thanks sorry it's not here for you to see it. I know. Uh, mm. It should be here tomorrow or Sunday. Um, I it's think coming from Georgia. I think the uh, well. Say, look at that. See, everybody thought I was going to commit suicide when I posted <laughs> that picture on the left. Because <laughs> that's I, hilarious. I, I, underneath, I had more people say, "What's going on?" Highway Under, to heaven. Underneath that, that says, <laughs> "Please call me." It says, "It, it says, you know, there you go. Things, See, change. things change. It's all very good. Always go with your gut. That's oh, me yeah. getting out of the new car business. And then, oh no, that's, so." That I, caption is not a suicide caption. Oh, everybody was like, what's going on? Watch this space. Well, yeah. Suicide, yeah. watch this space. It's like an ad for pumpkin spice lattes. That's what that looks like. <laughs> you don't say watch this space and then kill yourself. There's never a watch post space. again. No one's got your passwords. It's just done. That's it. Steve, Steve's going into the uh, aggregating <laughs> uh, Pinterest post. That's what yeah. this looks like. Yeah. Uh, uh, that Sirio is totally is, Zach. You nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. Serio is the real Bond group on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Follow him. He has good quality shit. Thank you, Matt. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Thank you guys for coming to visit, boys. Yeah. I, oh, I appreciate you stopping by. This facility is incredible. Actually, Thanks. it's I, amazing. I, I, well, I, you have your West Coast client management set up going on. Let's we'll do it over yeah, here. Yeah, for sure. I have uh, garage and 
envy right now because I'd love you. to turn my garage, my building into this. And if you want to have an East Coast presence, Matt, mm, maybe East, east maybe, Side uh, Collector Car Storage. Uh, maybe you should east, east Side Collector Car Storage. You got an extra building? I got an extra building. <laughs> <I know. laughs> and you can, I, you can I, teach I, me all about putting lifts in it and how to manage uh, it. And, avoid you know, the whenever possible. <laughs> The lifts are amazing to yeah. have. You know what would be even better? If I didn't have to have them. <laughs> yeah, even better. But you know, property, it's a B. Yeah, what are you gonna yeah, do, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But listen. Do you have a lift PhD program you have to go through to operate the lifts? Cause we did have to do training and certification. Yeah, yeah actually, bet, yeah. we did. Yeah, and I had to sign off all my a bunch of rights and all kind of craziness. I and bet. I had to do OSHA training. Oh, and I bet, all I bet stuff, you did. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's no joke. Those, that's those, no those, joke those stackers are very no heavy. Joke. <laughs> It looks like an aircraft carrier. And there's out there. actually like they have optional safety features that uh-huh. if you were really like just having guys off the street run them like they do in the city or whatever right. in New York City, right. like they have extra like lasers that will kind of like not allow you to do something dumb. Uh-huh. But because we have trained people doing it, and yep. it's just a very small number of people, like we don't have that. So like you could, if you don't pay attention, like, don't get me wrong, like, we know how to do the thing, but if, like, if you're not paying attention, you could fuck up very badly. <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah. and, and you look, it's like you took a dare. Hey, I want you to build this wonderful storage facility on an earthquake. Yeah, fault, right. On a fault line. High you water know. table, yeah. methane, <laughs> methane zone, and earthquakes, and fire. And I fires. can do that. I'm up no to problem. a challenge. You know, I, I, I got nothing going on. I know. The good news is building the building was hard. Running the business, not so hard. Yeah. Until trucks just sh- don't, until people don't answer when the truck is there. There to pick up their car. And mm. when we stop and I tell you what this car is that this dude is picking up, you're going to fucking piss yourself <laughs> laughing. Um, all right. All right. Thanks, boys. Thank that you. Was, Look uh, forward was great to it to again see sometime. You. We'll do it again soon, I'm sure. Thanks, man. And uh, that's all for us, guys. Uh, we will see all of you later. Uh, we are powered by SwitcherCast. Get it yourself. Do your own show. I don't even know the fucking website. Switchercast.com. Switchercast.com. <laughs> is it switchercast.com? Probably. Yeah, or we should work net. on that. Put that in, just type it in Google. We should work on that. <laughs> 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 that's our show. Goodbye. Right. See you later. <laughs>